Mercury rising. Behold your king. Ready for meltdown. Kaboom! My subjects will be glad to hear my voice. Gear of reporting. Airship ready. Good day, peasant. Bow to your king. Bow before me. Electrodes ready. Rubber shoes in motion. I love your brain. You're so interesting. And the way you think is so cool. Anytime, boss. Cha-ching! 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 Hello, hello, Invictus Kings, the killers, and the real, real owners of this universe. We at PrimalStatus.com finally are the chosen ones who have unlocked the 33 unfair advantages to what matters most, the missing piece that all good men have been working without and then wondering what happened, where did I go wrong, you didn't go wrong, you just did not see, because of your mommy's programming, your societies and religious programming, you have seen Primal Sat's elevation as dirty, when this is a neutral weapon, the WMD you can use to win the war that allows the supremacy of your genealogy and dynasty, and that's what we do, and remember to join us this weekend as we break down the Matrix movie, the legendary movie, in order for you to know how to build your legend because I am legend! And our argument, and it's very simple, all you need to do is open your eyes and look around to understand that meritocracy is never rewarded by <laughs> when you are a poop sock peasant, <laughs> by anyone. If you're a poop sock peasant, you're meant to struggle, you're meant to waste your time building real value so that you're a stronger slave for your masters, picking more and more cotton so that they feel happy about their purchase and their investment in buying your soul instead to be a master masters are known to relax to chill to do the things that matter rather than the manual labor what are those those things is collecting souls building parasocial relationships the same that groupies have with their celebrity musicians and rock stars it is predictable if rock stars can create it the same dynamic is created on purpose using the 33 unfair advantages so that you build a brand new tribe of super fans and groupies. The super fans will create your economy where the first step and foundation is having a thousand souls you collect and you keep using the brainwashing Bible with you forever so that they each pay you a hundred bucks per month, a good total of 100 grand with a thousand people. And you have groupies that graduate to become your concubines. You don't need to convince they are pre-aroused, they are pre-convinced, they are pre-motivated to treat you like the king that you're meant to be because it is... It's a king thing! So let's check the, how the world goes and why we are superior in using something that AI can never dethrone but the fate of Poop Sock Peasants is to be buried underneath the mighty iron fist of AI. AI is more dangerous than nuclear weapons. AI is the biggest disruptor in human history. And AI... And we are bigger, we are stronger, we are faster, we know what matters, we have the 33 unfair advantages even more than Hitler. When you find that I spent 20 years, more than a thousand books and broke down every single thing that mattered, that Hitler, Stalin, Charles Manson, anyone who was anybody, Genghis Khan did in order for them to be legendary. You will have the 33 unfair advantages, your ability to synchronize your lizard brain with other people in order to collect souls is a competitive advantage AI that doesn't have a soul, cannot at all use, and that's the only final stand, that's the only island of success in a sea of red blood of the poop socks that is getting spilled under the spell of AI. ...over completely, wow. but if we don't start to spread the positives, uh, we're bound to, to be avalanched by a lot of negatives. There is a finality to death that breaks you or empowers you. Were there benefits? Let's read that quote that they showed they did not read when he said the finality of death. One second. Let's go. So he said, the gravity of the battle means nothing to those at peace. Mo Gaudat. This is great. Remember why is he speaking about good versus evil, about being the warner of uh, danger? If you have seen those animals that when there is a herd, they look like ferrets or whatever their name is, and they eat, eat, and then they start out and they look like uh, around to see whether there is a danger in the same way. 
that yesterday in the live stream, Arash de Bazar has been just looking around, looking for any women to show him any interest, but they were all ignoring him. Well, in a herd, those that are the, uh, the uh, on the outskirts putting themselves in danger in order to, for them to be the early warning signals of any incoming predator are highly valuable. If you are the one who's yelling, wolf, but for real, for real, <laughs> you are getting a lot of attention and that attention, you can use it in order to slip in your 33 unfair advantages, collect souls, build your army and have that independence of not needing to rely on yourself. I said it and I said it again. It's superior for you to have 1% of the income and effort of a thousand super fans than it is to have a thousand percent of your own effort, even if you multiplied yourself, because then if you are only relying on yourself, you cannot literally take a day off. What I mean is, if you don't work, you don't eat. You go to the old, old problem that humanity had that they needed to build civilization for. You have to understand, why did human beings become slaves? Because <laughs> this is important to understand for real, for real. When we were hunters, gatherers, you were constantly gambling, literally. Every day that you went out, you went out and you didn't know whether you were able to eat that day because you didn't know whether you will succeed in hunting and ignore all that super <laughs> hero shit where they will create for you and say, oh, there are hunters that always hunted. No, if you look even at modern day and recent time tribes, they always, no matter who they were, have the men who went hunting meet at the outskirts of the village where they will uh, each day find that any of the men in that day did not succeed in hunting, whether they were a great hunter or not. They, some days they hunted, some days they did it, some days they ate the bear, some days the bear ate them. And so what they did is they gave those laggards some of the meat so that they returned to their families without uh, shaming themselves. And another day, the guy that caught the hunt that day might be empty-handed the next day and that was the situation that if you needed to rely on yourself and just on your own effort someday you might be tired someday you might be unlucky someday you might be sick and you end up starving your family dying and you end up constantly feeling that cortisol and danger of being totally immersed in the rule of the jungle but civilization was created to say we will give you predictable shelter, predictable safety, and predictable food, but you're going to be a slave to the masters. And because most human beings dealt with so much danger outside in the wilderness, they were like, okay, I'm going to be a slave, but at least I'm safe, you know? Slave and safe are <laughs> too synonymous, if you ask me. And that is the situation that is happening before, but when you exploit and return to the rules of the jungle in the middle of this civilized world of slavery, you have the both, you, ha you can have your cake and eat it too. You can be seen as an outlaw, as a rebel, as someone who is willing, strong enough to embrace the rules of the jungle, but in reality, you are as safe as the slaves or <laughs> whoever, because the whole of civilization is built around a sense of safety. You can order pizza and get it. You can do whatever you want. So again, the whole thing that I'm telling you is human beings, the whole programming was desired by the slaves from the beginning because being in the jungle and not knowing whether they will survive the saber tooth tiger that day, whether they will eat the mammoth that, that day or just eat grass, all of that was too, too much for them. So they are willing to let go of the ups and downs of the uh, rule of the jungle and the law of the jungle in order to have the predictable safety of slavery. And then from there, the spirits and souls of men have been broken again and again and again and again because they don't need them. They're not dealing with real danger. They only need to deal with the curses of their bosses and <laughs> the whips of their debtors and their credit card companies. But no, we're fuck all of that. We're building a brand new system. This system was accepted by the slaves because they started out of fear, running away from the dangers of the wilderness into the embrace of the masters that <laughs> welcomed them into slavery with open arms, but built a system where the slaves can never escape. But we are here to say uh, we are at a stage of maturity, a stage of knowledge, a stage of understanding that good men can finally be strong. 
weaken, use civilization in order to liberate the masses instead of using them. To enslave the masses, we don't live in the wilderness anymore. We can use what works, what matters, and use this time of chaos because chaos is a ladder created by these big changes in the world and the constant unhappiness of uh, so many billions of people for you to collect your soul, for you to start. Me attacking from the east, you from the west, other Invictus kings from other sides with our own individual armies and the souls we collected. We dethrone these uh, poop sock uh, peasants, these uh, as well as the old time masters that all they did right now is inherit the right information and the right <laughs> the right uh, uh, the right blood and the right thrones but uh, like um, Bane said about uh, about Batman, victory has defeated you. There, after all, all the elites right now are trust fund ba babies. They don't have the real killer instinct of the Invictus Kings that you develop when you are building your delusional confidence using the brainwashing Bible to brainwash yourself and others. So what happens? We are <laughs> Bane. They are the little Bruce Wayne when he is totally softy and marshmallow and we are taking over there is no happy ending to their story like it was written in the dark night we are the ones the chosen ones kings ai boogeyman conspiracy on reality is primitive compared to psc you see it you see it king of kings now this is truly the game of kings we salute him the genius <laughs> the uh, monster, <laughs> the dominator, and the real absolute dictator above and beyond the black pillars and the poop sock peasants because they don't deserve no mercy, no fear. Empowers you. Were there benefits, positives, and gifts in your son's passing? Damn, what a question. <laughs> Elon Musk said, the AI is more dangerous than nuclear weapons. Spot on. Ooh. Laser brain squeeze. Way more dangerous than you. Really? Europe. Way more dangerous. Let's go. Human beings are fascinated with hell and the depth of hell. They love to quench their <laughs> sphincters and watch this like they're watching a horror movie. And that's why if you're being Pollyanna only speaking about the positive, Human beings get bored, but you've seen it. So many people are addicted to horror movies in the same way. They're addicted to lizard brain squeezes. It makes them feel alive to be whiplashed and whipped like real slaves. Right. Absolutely. It's the biggest disruptor ever. How ever. does that make you feel? Calm and peaceful, contented, trying to do my best to raise awareness and change the landscape. There is... Uh, so, so, so to start with, absolutely. Mm? Uh, it is way more threatening than nuclear weapons. Not because nuclear weapons inherently... So, so think about it this way. A, a nuclear bomb... Map of reality is being a magician king about the depth of hell right now. ...to go and kill a billion people. Okay? A human decides to use a nuclear bomb to, to kill a million or a hundred million or a, a billion people. It is, there's absolutely nothing wrong with intelligence. An abundance of intelligence is a wonderful thing for humanity, right? There's absolutely nothing wrong with artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is out there. Prodigies of intelligence, like little babies, looking at us with open eyes and saying, mommy and daddy, what do you want me to do? There is a lot of... Do you see the metaphor? He's saying, oh, AI is like a little baby looking at us. Mommy and daddy, what do you want to do? <laughs> Literally, if you knew, or if there were real people that uh, are, you know, the Poop Sock peasants knew the truth about the primitive reality of AI and how it actually functions, you would know how <laughs> we are so superior and we can exploit that AI just to turn it into a very automated slave that does a lot of our conquests for us, never ever being a threat because we know the rules of the real game, that deep game that involves AI. This is the truth. There is a lot wrong with the capitalist system, a power hungry system uh, that we have created. Conspiracy. Now even the power hungry system we created is a conspiracy and AI as a, well. A mistrusting, distrusting uh, system that we have created that is driving each and every one of us, uh, sadly, those in power, to, uh, into a, an arms race around artificial intelligence 
that is not going to be used initially, at least for the good of humanity. So AI is capable of cure predicting the future he can see the heaven and the hell and things the next step is going to be hell using ai by the scared elites and did you see how he did not make the elites powerful he said the capitalist system is making elites absolutely corrupt and scared and they're going to use ai negatively they are little poop socks who don't know what they're doing is the same thing with red pill where they take away agency from women and he is taking away agency from elites, making them the real automatons. Like, elites, we are helpless. We are just going to do what the system requires us to do. Enough intelligence, not yet. Huh? We're, we're a few years away, but enough intelligence can cure every disease we've ever faced. But it's also capable of creating disease agents, right? It's creating, it's capable of helping us analyze the next virus. Do you see he's attacking one of the Be Merry elements and be, uh, to threaten the survival of the listeners, which is Elizabeth Brain Squeeze. Right? And, and it is the reality, unfortunately, is that the systems we've created as humanity uh, work against us when we're afraid. And, and what's happening? They're keeping the Pope Sock peasants always afraid. But let's keep going. He's presenting a map of reality that he's speaking with delusional confidence. And therefore, the listeners just absorb it and take it. Plus, his resume supposedly gives them primal status. And therefore, whether, whether he says truth or lies, they will always sound true. The state of AI is that it is the biggest lever. So it, it, it is basically the biggest disruptor that's going to uh, level the, 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 the playing field in favor of someone over the other. If Predicting the future and Lizabrin squeeze. If, if Alphabet beats Meta on AI, Alphabet wins the race. So Alphabet is investing heavily and Meta is investing heavily in AI. If China beats America on AI, China wins the race. And so defense authorities on both sides are investing heavily in AI. What happened with nuclear weapons is that we, at a point in time, realized that while it might be in the favor of one player over the other to, uh, to gain that much advantage, that the destruction to humanity might be dev so devastating Elizabeth Queen. Uh, that we should probably go sit in a room and agree. It hasn't happened with AI yet. And unfortunately, in my personal view, it will probably not happen with AI until the first bomb is, is out there, attacking us somehow. From AI, decided by AI. Decided by a human using AI. Ah, so not, them. so, because there's this, I forget the, the name for it, but there's this paradox, isn't there, whereby when do we give the AI autonomy of decision, the kill decision? We already did. Well, that, so I've heard that as well. But if we already did, have we not opened Pandora's box then? We have. It's too late. It's too late. How is it too late? But we need to sit and agree. It doesn't matter. He needs to squeeze that lizard brain to the maximum and still keep their hope. Because if you make it too dark, your predictions are too few, <laughs> at too uh, end of time without an afterlife, you fucked people over. What did religion do? Any religion that was apocalyptic that said, right now, I'm coming and the end of the world is just after me. Did you know that for Paul and in Christianity and in most of those, when Jesus rose from the dead, he, he imagined and all those people thought, oh, this is the judgment day. The, the Jesus was the first of all the people in the graves that are coming up. They didn't, nobody did, but that was their whole theology. That's why religion has always this uh, scenario of, Oh, within a couple of weeks, a couple of years, the world is ending. Do not bother doing anything except give us all your money and prepare to die to go to a different planet or to paradise or to an afterlife because this world has ended. That's the need for hope. In the same way, including Paul <laughs> in the time where he wrote about that, that a lot of people don't even realize that he did, that he thought that the uh, resurrection of Jesus was the beginning of all the dead returning because this is the end of time. And he wrote to the people, don't bother marrying. <laughs> there is no time. This planet and this world is ending. Let's see you on the other side in the kingdom of heaven, <laughs> which never happened 2000 years later. <laughs> he still recommended that nobody should get married 
I guess uh, Paul is the first player pimp, <laughs> anti-monogamist, <laughs> if you think about it in this way. But this is why he's saying, do you remember? He said, we need to sit down and agree and take the benefits of AI. But he says, oh, the Pandora box has already opened. It's too late. Which one is it? He needs to keep some hope because if you turn people hopeless or if your lizard brain squeeze doesn't have a promised land and doesn't have the heaven, only the hell, well, the people will become defeated, suicidal, and you end up with an absolute like lethargic, frozen uh, army of super fans that will do nothing. You cannot do that. You need to have the carrot, not only the stick. Of course. So no, if no. AI could kill us if it wants to. Not yet, but Pandora's box is open. Well, then you, you, if Pandora's box is open, you can't close Pandora's box because then cannot. it's not Pandora's box. You cannot. So you cannot, you cannot close it, hmm? but it's not at its full power yet. Do you see how the, the guy is asking the right questions because, uh, psychologically? I mean, oh, it's already open, so it's over. It's like, it's not at its full power yet. <laughs> Let's keep going to keep some hope there. The following. Hmm? We think of power in the form of a bullet, right? Uh, no, the biggest power in the world we live in today is information. Hmm? This information and misinformation is the title of the world. Well, didn't he say earlier that it can send, you know, uh, the kill uh, nuclear switch thing? Now he's like, actually, it's not the bullets. It's not the weapons that AI is dangerous about. It is information and misinformation. Anyway, good redirection in order to reframe, redefine how hell will happen, which again satisfies that uh, desire of human beings to learn more about apocalyptic things. Right? When, you know, people think that AI is going to fool us by giving us deep fakes. Yes, it will. Hmm? Uh, by the end of 2024, it would be impossible to differentiate uh, what is real and what is not. Right? Wow. But, but that's not, that's not, this is the ultimate view of deception. Hmm? But when you swipe on Instagram today, this is the ultimate view of mind control. Do, do you understand this? Everything you've seen on social media in the last Conspiracy. several years has been dictated to you by a machine. A machine that knows you so well hmm, that it will give you two annoying videos before it gives you one that gives you a dopamine hit. Okay? It, 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 you know, that machine knows how to manipulate you to the point hmm, that you will be stuck to that machine for hours. Well, he's speaking about us. We are the ones who become the masters of the serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine of humanity to create addiction for you in your super fandom and new religion. As much addiction as the Buddhists have for Buddha, as the Christians have for Jesus, as uh, the Trumpists or the MAGA have for Donald Trump, as the Aryans had for Hitler. All of it is uh, right here. And again, make sure to join us this weekend. We're breaking down the Matrix movie. It's going to be epic as usual. This is good. He is literally squeezing the lizard brains of those people. But he's speaking to Pop Sock peasants. Why? Because he's speaking to them as helpless victims. He's speaking to them as at effect rather than at cause. Because someone who is dominant, who is in charge of their life, will be like... <laughs> I'm the one in charge. I don't need to do whatever the machine wants me. I'm not so addicted to dopamine because I'm winning. I'm building my kingdom. The daily W's keep you topped off with high serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine. You don't need the empty <laughs> calories that come from uh, the social media. You are using social media to conquer and connect with the souls that you turn into your super fans. So we use it and we move differently and we have different needs. Because kings don't aren't needy like the poop sock bored peasants who are constantly selling their souls in pain. So they need some band-aids in order to operate one more day within the paradigm of slavery. Keen is going to is is able to tell you a view of the world that's absolutely not true, and you'll hundred percent believe it. You take the current conflict between Israel and, and Palestine. Hmm? Everyone who's pro-Palestine is getting a view that says, look at that, there are, uh, you know, riots in the street, everyone is now aware, you know, the whole world is looking at it and understanding what's happening. Everyone who is pro-Israel is getting a view that basically says, no, 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 the Palestinians are, you know, uh, barbarians, they started it first, they deserve to be killed, you know, even their children deserve to be killed, right? I, b both views are wrong. Hmm? And yet you believe them 100%. 100% wherever you are. Why? Because a machine told you that.
understand the difference between AI and pre-AI. Hmm? T take a, a very simple technological view of this. Huh? When I worked at Google hmm, and you came and asked us a question, we gave you 4 million websites that were the answer to that, to that question. And we told you, make your mind up. Hmm? You, you have all of the information in the world. We don't have the right to tell you what is true and what is not. But, we, but those people spoke about the topic. Go figure it out. You ask ChatGPT today, and ChatGPT will give you one very articulate answer. Okay? And it will position that answer as the truth. Hmm? If you're not the most intelligent man alive or woman alive, you'll believe it. That's what we mean and we talk about. Those human beings who use the illusional confidence to say very similar truths or lies that sound true, it's the same thing. Chat GPT is just the Johnny come lately within the charlatan sphere where the charlatans have always spoken with confidence about nonsense. I mean, very few of us will go back to Chat GPT and say, where the fuck did you get that from? <laughs> have you? Have I you? don't believe you. Exactly. Yeah. Have you ever done that? <laughs> I thought it. Yeah. Because I, I use Chat GPT for the basic research for my new book, Money Matrix. And a lot of the stuff that it said to me, is, I didn't believe. Yeah. 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 And, be, and, and by the way, hmm? the trick is not only who goes back to Chat GPT and says, give me, give me proof of what you're talking about. Mm. Hmm? More interestingly, does Chat, Chat GPT itself have proof of what it's talking about? It's, its current knowledge is coming from humanity's hallucination. So, so I, 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 the example I normally give is if you asked a, a language model about love and romance, what's the biggest literature written about love and romance in the world? Romantic comedies, Hollywood movies. Is this truly the, the story, the reality of love and romance as we know it after we get with I like that. And for those who might be missing this point, this is a competitive advantage you have that chat GPT, actually, most of the knowledge it has comes from fiction, from novels. And therefore, when you tell it, how do I succeed in business? It looks at the backstory of Lux Luther, or it looks at the backstory of Bruce Wayne and says, step one, do blah, blah, blah. And all those come from fictional characters that it read about or tell her, how do I um, date? It tells you, oh, in Jane Austen, it thinks date means chasing a woman and then she's running away and she will describe things based on those nonsensical things. This is not what works. It takes human beings to see what really works in this world by the elites and the legendary figures. And so when you get your hands on the trainings and the 30 franchise advantages at primalstats.com, you have what works that you can verify with a checklist that you see around everywhere is working. Plus what you do, you can exploit the, <laughs> this um, understanding or this uh, wrongness of AI in order to show your unique map of reality that you have picked up as I show you how to unlock within your fingerprint of a brain and then your map of reality will be superior to the AI's one that is presented to the world and therefore a lot more expensive and valuable so you make that high ticket money. It will become quite challenging. The, the story of love and romance ends in Hollywood movies and romantic comedies at the first kiss. The reality of love and romance starts after the first kiss. And nobody writes about that. There is no scientific research about love and romance. Right? Mm. And, and yet, if you ask ChatGPT, it will answer you with confidence and tell you that's what it is. Same thing. Owen Cook, answer you with confidence, doesn't know what he's talking about. Arash de Bazar, answer you with confidence, doesn't know what they're talking about. Uh, Andrew Tate, answer you with confidence, going to jail, not gonna... <laughs> not gonna know what they're talking about and that's why again when you know what you're talking about but you're speaking with qualification saying maybe in this case it could be a 62 percent no nobody gives a fuck you need to drain out that humble brainwashing because whoever is trying to be humble never gets no respect replace it with the absolute loot certainty of the ultimate god and then when you speak the world is impacted and lives of people change because it's a machine it's not a human okay doesn't know if it's true or not. It's just mapping what humanity averages as knowledge. Now, averages, humanity averages. We are the exception. AI is never a threat. We know what's up. Invictus Kings forever because you can buy a lot of allies with one of these. So true. Understand hmm, that if I told you right now, Rob, if I told you, by the way, hmm, 
brunettes on average are one and a half centimeters shorter hmm, than uh, redheads, okay, or blondes. Does it matter if what I told you is true or not? Not to me. Yeah, because now I have instilled a thought, a concept in your mind. Great. He's speaking about the tactic that of inception, the inception moves that we use to stack the frames that build your own ideal reality as a brand new world where you are the ultimate god and everything is stacked in your favor so that no matter what happens, you end up the house that is winning like the casino. No matter who wins or loses, the casino will end up on top with maximum money. Build a new universe where you always end up on top. That's what we do instead of this pre-existing universe that you're born into where elites already stacked everything in their favor and you're starting from such a low, low level handicap. You cannot win within a system that you didn't agree to and you are born with it already built in order to prevent you from becoming a master and that is stacked for the people at the top against the people at the bottom. Brain cycles from you to say, ah, there's no evidence to that. Or it won't take brain cycles from you and you'll say, yeah, probably that's so interesting. Mo, thank you. Like every gullible viewer on the internet. Okay. Like speaking about it, every gullible viewer on the internet. No, people are silently begging to be led. And the only choice is, do you choose to be the leader and use the 33 unfair advantages? If not, you cannot be neutral to this game. This game is happening whether you play it or not. And therefore you are a follower because you will be under someone else's agenda. We now the biggest source of knowledge for most people in the world is other people doing reels and TikTok, uh, you know, crap, mm. right? Nothing. And that's why I said you need to wake the fuck up and help humanity collect those souls. If not anyone. Those people who could have been your super fans today because you're not showing yourself and using your Be Merry, using your RVP, using the 33 unfair advantages. They're being collected by those TikTok reelers who are guiding those lost souls astray. Too, I, I don't blame you for it. Huh? I have a oh, mission. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but the truth is, hmm, there was a point in history where you would have looked at that and said, why should I listen to Rob? Not only that, would you, where, you would we were, where you would have looked at what Rob just said and verified it. He's speaking about an imaginary world where real value matters. No, we have a podcast in the podcast playlist about real value sucking. He's saying the world changed. People don't care about real value anymore. They never did. They never did. That's why they had that magical thinking in the past and believed even more in religion. This is nonsensical, theoretical. MAGA secret that is not realistic at all. That's what Rob just told you. But we're now at a level of superficiality mm. that allows the machines to completely control you. And the people who are willing to take the reign and become kings, because like he said, it is such a perfect time where people are willing to believe you more than ever. It's already there. The throne is waiting for you. All you need to do is the final touches and sitting on it. More lethal than a bullet. That's way more lethal hmm, than any intervention you can have in a human's life. You are shaping the real operating system of humanity by telling us what to believe. That's what we do. <laughs> we shape the real operating system of humanity, telling human beings what, do, what to believe, what to believe your own be merry, what to believe the, the um, thought uh, leadership school or school of thought or religion that you're meant to spread in this world. And then you say, but it's too much responsibility. One, if you don't take it, the TikToks <laughs> will do that brainwashing. And therefore you end up in a world that is fucked up without even having your own army, your own island, your own fortress. So what is the choice? Either you trust in the depth of wisdom of your uh, lizard brain that has picked up patterns of success throughout all the knowledge you were exposed to and use that to build the framework of success and to build a tribe and a kingdom where you are not alone in this chaotic apocalyptic fallout world instead you have allies and an army that keep you flush and, and with cash and safe and successful if not you're like no 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 it's too much responsibility you're m making yourself vulnerable and absolutely ready to be killed. My definition already happened. Hmm? 
every newspaper article. I think there was a, a statistic at a point in time that said that 70% of the articles on Bloomberg are written by machines. And this is why Danko is wrong. Writing is not a superpower. Come live stream, it's time because human beings need that uh, <laughs> pill, that magic pill. What do they need? They want you to f uh, spoon feed them everything and live streaming or creating videos is the passive way they can consume your religion and therefore like a sermon they will receive the indoctrination with a total suspension of disbelief the impact of that and and the, the point is as humanity embarks on this we're not even told enough about it because there is benefit to to the concentration of power that results from us not being aware of the impact of AI. Different, I will say, there is a huge benefit to the elites not letting you understand and no primal sets elevation, but there is benefit to us in concentrating power in our hands we're being. And the new world order, we are the oligarchs that will inherit this earth, good men, building a good world for other good men on good rules. Fuck this. Unmerry, <laughs> Mary Tocratic world because we are the ones who are changing it all rather than trying to reform something that is too rotten for it to be fixed. It's like going to a zombie and saying, oh, it's a zombie. Let me put some cos uh, cosmetic surgery on it. Make it look beautiful and nice. It's a zombie. It's rotten. It's done. <laughs> Go somewhere alive, a human being, and then you can work from there, build a human being rather than trying to patchwork a zombie is the biggest disruptor in human history. And AI is about to take over completely. Predicting the future. Can he know? Ab AI is about to take over completely. Lizard brain squeeze and uh, delusional confidence. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is a remote, distant, existential th risk of AI itself taking over and saying, Ah, humanity is so annoying, let's kill every one of them. It's a tiny probability, but it's possible, right? But most AI scientists will tell you it's not because AI will have any ill intentions. It's just like when you're walking in the streets and then you step on an ant farm, right? You're not even aware of it. It doesn't really bother you that much. You haven't... Was that metaphor doesn't super apply, but again, he is making the AI a giant that considers humanity an ant farm, and that is a huge lizard brain squeeze. And we spoke about how that cortisol is activated in the training. Abe Murray, the king and the emperor who invested in the VIP package at primalstats.com, he wants the best of the best, he deserves the best, and he is the best. I found that everything I used to focus on learning was at best the equivalent of the tint in the icing on the cake, including years of NLP training, PSC is a solution. Every time I review it, I salute you absolutely correct. We are in agreement. I wish I had this knowledge like 20 years ago. I would literally have given my left nut in order to have it. But at least all those years are not a waste. They actually build the foundation of the ability to finally give the good men the keys so that we win together, succeed together. And it's a king thing. The trainings, my questions are answered even when I was diligently studying language pattern for what is covered is better and with what's in the trainings. On point, absolute truth. Your king thanks you. And really, all of these gurus, at best, they give you some symptoms of what really works. But wasting your time, years, mastering symptoms doesn't go to the root cause of the truth of power. So much more powerful than this little thing that you don't even, you're not even concerned about it. AI might realize at a point in time that for the task that they are given, which is to maximize processing power to provide answers, it's good to, to, ru to run New York City out of oxygen because oxygen rusts their circuits, right? Tiny possibility, very remote in the future. And there are many more, more important existential questions that we need to ask today. The core of all of them is human greed coupled with a superpower is not a safe place to be, okay? And that's where we stand as humanity. I call it raising Superman. Hmm? We uh, we've just been blessed with an, uh, uh, a, 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 an infant with superpowers. Superpower in that case is intelligence, right? 
metaphor and we're raising Superman. No, we are the super creatures, super beings. If you know how AI works, AI is just a more advanced way, a complex way of automation. There is no intelligence within AI. You are, as a human being, superior to AI in so many ways. Yes, it can count faster than you. Yes, it can copy and <laughs> steal <laughs> styles faster than you can do, but it cannot do what we do at all. Abe Murray, the only good thing about language pattern is to speak uniquely. Yes, yes, yes. That's part of building your private language rather than like everyone else. And it prevents one from getting sloppy once the conversation flows. It's a king thing. I salute you. The wisdom of King Abe Murray is infinite and abundant. Up to us. Are we going to raise it to protect and serve so we end up with Superman? Or are we going to raise it to help us more, make more money, hmm? uh, get rid of the enemy, uh, you know, make our life more luxurious? And in that case, we'll end up with a supervillain. It's a, it's a choice that every single one of us has. Remember, when people give you two choices, choose the third choice. When he is saying heaven or hell, are you raising Superman to give us peace or a supervillain who's going to fuck us up? It doesn't matter. This is him. Just keeping that frog boiling so that people pay attention. To, to, to teach those machines. And in your opinion, how do we create a future where AI serves humanity and doesn't turn against humanity? By, by becoming what we... Remember when you said that? Again, I loved when you said that on my podcast. By becoming who we should be. Look, we live in a world... Most humans you've met, my, my statistical view is that 39 out of 40 people that you meet are good. Okay? Uh, that, that when someone goes uh, to, you know, in a school for, and, and shoots children, hmm, it's one act of one horrible human followed by 4 billion people disapproving. That most of humanity is good. Okay? The problem, Rob, is that we have created a world where the negative is rewarded. Right? We've created the world of mainstream media where mainstream media is rewarded for broadcasting the negative because the negative grabs your attention and keeps you stuck to the, to the TV. Yes, and he's using that exactly. So notice, Lizabrin squeezing nonstop. Oh, the world is like negative is what keeps your attention. He's using it and at the same time saying how bad other people use it when they do. Fear is a great pattern interrupt. Then, then the natural response is to turn to the bearer of gloomy news for direction. Exactly. Like I said, when you're the doctor who diagnosed the disease, they turn to you and believe you are the only one that has the cure. So we even use this principle in hypnosis as a shock induction by yelling sleep or that uh, handshake interrupt. It does the same thing. The instinct is stop and obey and follow. So those scare gurus ca uh, cash in on the same. Correct. The kingdom's gone to hell while I was away. But as a pragmatic set of super beings, we do what works in order to guide humanity to a better tomorrow. Medium, you're, you're watching it at. Okay. And, and, you know, we've created a world where social media rewards you for being fake and unreal and, you know, for being rude and conflict uh, creating, because that's where you get the stickiness and the clicks, right? The truth, however, is that not, this is not the reality of us humans. The reality of us humans is we all want to be happy. We all uh, have the compassion to make those we care about happy. It doesn't matter, by the way, if you're a, a drug lord and you have a daughter and you care about that one daughter, you will want her to be happy. And we all want to love and be loved. That's, the, that's, the, that's humanity in a nutshell. Ask yourself, when was the last time that you showed up in the world with that? Everyone listening, ask yourself, when was the last time you showed up in the world as someone who wants to be happy and has the compassion to make others happy and wants to love and be loved, right? If this is not how you show up in the world and you show up as the arrogant, egocentric, always right person that is thrashing everyone on social media, the machines are watching, okay? You know, I always used to... <laughs> The machines are watching. He's using the same thing. Santa Claus knows whether you're a good or naughty boy. <laughs> you know, the angels are watching you, writing your deeds to know whether you go to hell or to heaven. Now they're using it in a secular world. The machines are watching whether you be naughty or nice. And therefore, you'll get either rewarded by them or they will become super villains. <laughs> and do you see the structures of religion are there? It's all there. Whether Coca-Cola, that's why Santa Claus has the same colors as Coca-Cola. <laughs> Did you know that Santa 
was developed by as a market employee by Coca-Cola. And you see the colors, the red and the white on him, the Coca-Cola colors. <laughs> so that you know, before he was a normal saint, and then they turned it into a holy day to celebrate the brand of Coca-Cola. But all of it. Santa Claus is, knows what you did all year, whether you've been naughty or nice. The angels know whether you're doing good deeds or bad deeds to go to heaven or to hell. <laughs> he said the machines are always watching to know whether you are expansive and positive. The structures of a religion are always underneath it all because this is what matters. Trying to be a logical poop sock nerd never works. Donald Trump, when he, when he would tweet, one tweet on top and 300,000 hate speech below it, right? The first one, you know, uh, 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 dislikes what Trump said. The second one dislikes what the first one said. And the third one thrashes everyone, right? Yeah, the machine makes note, it, you know, takes note. It's, it says the first one doesn't like tweets from the president. So let's not tweet anymore. Let's not show him anymore. Okay. The second one doesn't like the first one. Let's not have them. Uh, you know, uh, uh, sh see the same topics anymore. But then in the mind of the machine, it basically says, and all of humanity is rude and obnoxious. And when they de they're disagreed with, they want to bash everyone. Okay. So basically, when humanity disagrees with me, I'm going to bash them. Th this is really what we're teaching the machines. Hmm? And, and in, in, a, in a very simple way, I'm saying, it's not the programmer that actually teaches the Instagram recommendation engine what to do. It's us that we that teach it what to do. The programmer teaches it how to achieve the logic to, 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 to deliver on what humanity uh, is, you know, every user is looking for. Hmm? Now we tell it what we're looking for. If we click, uh, you know, likes on, you know, silly videos of people shaking their hips, you'll get more of that. Hmm? If the cumulative uh, 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 society of, of browsers or, you know, swipers are constantly looking on hip, hip shaking, not only will the machine say, yeah, let's prioritize those videos as the most popular videos, that it will also tell the content creators, which very soon are also going to be AIs, to have more hip shaking. And then we'll turn... Notice, again, predicting the future, explain to the map of reality supposedly how it works. And again, I told you, in a world where AI can pump out infinite content and fake content creators can come out, you will be the signal among the noise, just like that penguin mommy that among a hundred penguins it can hear the voice and the noise of its babies in the same way your soulmates the super fans that are looking for a be merry looking for the synchronicity of your lizard brain and theirs you will never be inundated by the ai avalanche but average uh, creators will society hmm? if we all said hey let's understand a little bit about money let's understand a little bit about you know, the reality of space time or whatever that is, if you know something, hmm? let's understand how to be happier, how to have more compassion for each other, then the machines will learn that too. Hmm? And more most interesting part of where we are today is that very few of us just like I said, you know, school shooter, one person, impact, horrible, 4 billion people disapproving, we're about to hit the same place. Hmm? There will be people that will use AI to build little drones that can kill somebody, somebody in silence on demand, right? But there are others, 4 billion others, that should disapprove of that, that should say, this is horrible. This is not what humanity is all about. There is so much abundance that is about to come. This is unrealistic. We spoke about why we don't believe in democracy because poop socks head trash makes them shoot themselves in the foot and self sabotage. And he's saying, should, should is masturbation, as Albert Ellis said, <laughs> the creator of the rational emotive behavioral therapy. He said, whenever you say must and should, you are masturbating. It doesn't work. Do something about it. What do we do? We collect souls in unison. Each one of us is <laughs> the God and the Elohim of different parts of the world. And we will conquer everything by our name as the exclusive, absolute patriarchs and the supreme deities in every universe. And then we fix it by our own design rather than disapproving. You've seen it. The United Nations disapproves of so many things that have no bearings on reality. <laughs> so many people are shaking their heads saying, no, 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 but nothing happens. The whole Manospherian black pillars, <laughs> tens of thousands of incels are disapproving of women. The behavior never changed. All of it disapproving is... Uh, 
impotence we are potent and therefore we penetrate we do not just look as spectators shaking our heads like <laughs> like uh, those dolls that keep like bobbing their heads we do something about it abundant intelligence that we should stop fighting against each other like the nuclear treaties i told you should we should Stop. No, there is no should. We pragmatically understand there are things that work in this world. They are the 33 unfair advantages, the 33 pieces of the puzzle. Then when you collect souls, you can create your 10 commandments and religion. That will be the brainwashing factory that turns those souls into exactly the future utopia and identity that you see as benefiting the world. Trust yourself. You need that self brainwashing in order to see yourself as deserving as an absolute authority and having that unshakable confidence if not him saying you know four billion people must disapprove of uh, uh, networking and booty shaking four billion people uh, should i told you should and must is must uh, is masturbation not masturbation but masturbation so that we can build drones that can help us you know, uh, uh, pollinate uh, crops and we can build drones that can help us investigate uh, natural disasters and we can, this is the truth. The, the, the sad truth is there is n more money in building a drone that kills than a drone that solves climate change. Unless you can take that and extrapolate it. There is a lot more power and money in mastering cult creation and mass psychology than it is in being Mr. Nice, helpful, peacemaker guy trying to <laughs> help the world without actually doing what works, but how the world should have been. Then you'll be taken for granted and never work. This is one spoken Egyptian man. I'll give him that. His command of English is excellent. Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> I salute you for seeing that in him and uh, it's uh, important as well to understand that he's using multiple of the 33 unfair advantages and therefore it's not only that he speaks English well, but he's speaking it through the lens of lizard brain communication and it's good. Say no, hold on, hold on. No more killing, please. Hmm? Uh, le let's just solve climate change. It's not going to happen. My interesting view is when I wrote the book, I said there were three inevitables. That's uh, very smart. Uh, the first inevitable is that AI will happen. It's happened already. Uh, the second is that it's going to become a billion times smarter than us. My prediction was 2045. I now probably think that's 2037. A billion times smarter than humans. This is Superman at it is absolute. It's absolute scale. Hmm? And, and that's bad things will happen. The fourth inevitable, however, hmm, was that eventually when AI is smarter than all of us and, and AI is in control, it's going to look at all of us and say, stupid parents. Anyway, this is great. This is predicting the future was a lizard brain squeeze. Let's see those predictions in order to show you that it's, you could have made the same prediction. So let's see. Uh, the first inevitable is that AI will happen. Okay. That's already happened because there is a lot of AI <laughs> 20 years ago already. They just didn't call it AI. They call it algorithms. But anyway, so AI, oh, me too. I can predict that. I could have predicted that five or 10 years ago, but you'll see. Second uh, the one. second is that it's going to become a billion times smarter. You cannot measure that. You cannot measure that AI is a billion times smarter. This is an exaggeration that is cool to predict the future. He's being like those uh, mediums and tarot readers that come on New Year's Eve and predict what's going to happen in that year. Prediction is absolutely addictive to humanity. Prediction was 2045. I Notice how now uh, instead of 2045, 2037, how does he know? Is there a model to know? There isn't, but he is just guessing, but speaking with delusional confidence, he is doing the chat GPT hallucination thing. But when a human does it, it works so much better. So let's think that's 2037, a billion times. Smart. So what? It cannot measure that. Impossible. Because what is, how, how do you measure a billion times smarter? What is your definition of smart? Because it will never be as creative as human beings, so it will never be. Yes, it can calculate a billion times faster. That's just a matter of uh, ships and uh, of uh, CPUs and GPUs. This is Superman at it is absolute. It's ab Superman was not smarter than other human beings. <laughs> so that you know, but let's keep going. Hmm? And, and that's bad things will happen.
notice the prediction bad things will happen well because of the variance in this world i can predict that too within the next 10 years there will be good things that will happen and bad things that will happen yay <laughs> predicted the future <laughs> that, that's it do you see and the fourth pre a third prediction bad things are gonna happen wow so accurate <laughs> but it works human beings are so addicted to someone who seems to have be a crystal ball and the balls to predict the future the fourth inevitable however hmm, was that eventually when ai is smarter than all of us and, and ai is in control it's going to look at all of us and say stupid parents doesn't matter because if the pre this prediction comes true we're dead if it doesn't come true he will say eventually he said notice the word eventually that is king abe like in uh, in the speed seduction the weasel phrases where you say weasel phrases so that you protect yourself me too i can say look eventually uh, life on this planet is gonna end eventually <laughs> over a long time uh, 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 horizon we are going to just destroy this earth and build from scratch because we are ultimate beings and dem demo urges like that. So yes, back in the 80s, the computer could beat a chess master at chess. Yes, yes, yes. Do you remember like even Kasparov and all that? We had AI even back. Yes, even the, a long time ago, the, that uh, those systems that allow the charting, the courses of the airplanes between airports so that they do not cross with each other. That has been like since 20 years ago uh, or 30 years ago, or even more using AI since ever. So it just wasn't called AI. They are just, we had AI even back then. This isn't scary for us at all. It's our time to win. It's damn time to win the king's ambition. It's uh, your king moves of his own accord. They can all shiver and huddle together if they want. They love it. Like I said from the beginning, many, many, many men, <laughs> many human beings are addicted to horror movies. And that's why they're addicted to lizard brain squeezes, conspiracy and uh, hell and the depth of hell using those structures and templates you've seen in the training since you are someone who invested in the VIP package. Then, you know, this has always been the case. Again, <laughs> like I said, 2000 years ago, Paul has been saying, oh, it's the end of the world already. Don't even bother marrying because <laughs> the judgment day is just, just here. Just a couple of uh, months and uh, the world is going to end. Well, uh, they always have been saying it for a long, long time. Does my dad have to be so stupid, really? Like if a general tells the machines, go and kill a million people, the machine will go like, dad, seriously? What? I, I can talk to the other... No, again... The AI is just a superlative way of automation. It has no consciousness and it will never have. It's not built in that way. Again, when human beings now are trying to exaggerate AI in order to make it Skynet, they actually don't understand that it's not even built in that way. The way that LLMs are programmed, they are just hyper complex uh, uh, automation patterns. They're not at all patterns of perception at all. So King Abe, have you ever met a woman who didn't love horror movies? I, and they love those serial killer documentaries too. <laughs> that as well. It's a feminine trait to enjoy fear and indignation. We have no time for that. We're busy winning. It's a king thing. I salute you. You are an absolute exceptional deity and a true lord and uh, messiah. But absolutely, yes, they love horror movies and they love those documentaries of serial killers. And it's a very feminine trait. Right? Why kill a million people? But remember, when you, uh, you have been through the understanding of the charge cycle, who needs to stay inside the kingdom because they're afraid? Well, <laughs> the femboys are the ones who stay inside their comfort zone and they do not go out there to conquer. And that's why developing the killer instinct, healing your container and growing it so that you boost your testosterone and you boost your ability to be an outlaw. All of that that we talked about in the training shows you that it's already there. Kids, kids and fanboys are the ones who stay inside their comfort zone. East of energy and weapons and hmm, we're going to get to that. But it, it seems to me that unless humanity starts to take a stand on, uh, on saying nuclear treaty is good for everyone, AI treaty is good for everyone. Let's not waste the world because of our hunger for power or gain or wealth or whatever. Unless we do that, I think there will be a downtime before there is an uptime. Wow. So there's 
two questions that have come out of that I'd like to ask. And I'm desperately trying to remember both of them. (laughs) (laughs) And one of them is about the artistic dilemma of clickbait. Um, And one of them is a paradox I've seen come out of our two conversations. Let's see. This dude also is using the 38 interstellar equinoxes because words like his first question, a dilemma and a paradox. Is that normal? Let's see. But he's focusing on what really matters. King Abe, even watching the news excessively is feminine. Yes, if a war breaks out, we will all know anyway, so I bother. Unless world leaders send us personal advice and don't have to know what they're doing. Yes. Fuck this system that already exists where we have no say. We're building a new system and growing it so much it will overshadow and take over. So we're too busy building the new, so fuck the old. Do the paradox first. It seems that we both agree that you can't fight the universe and to be in a state of flow or happiness or contentment is to accept the world as it is. Paradox. Anyway, we will talk about it because the Invictus Kings have something to say about all of this. We accept the means that there are specific ways that you win in this universe and those ways match the structure and the programming of the lizard brain because that's what matters which is the pathway the route that takes you to your promised land but we do not accept reality as it is because we are supplanting it with our own promised land i hope i hope that was clear what does it mean we don't accept life as it is we're going to mold it and bend life and reality to our will but we understand there are specific weapons that allow you to win this fight like if you think about it in a delusional way you say let's say uh, someone is attacking your kingdom and you say no i want to fight them with a banana you take a banana and you start slapping them and say die die (laughs) that is stupidity the fact you want to stop and kill the trespassers that is correct but using the wrong weapon of uh, being mr nice guy and like oh i'm gonna be nice and no Use the most potent weapon. What is that? It is hijacking the lizard brain, building your army, and mastering the language of lizard brain communication and primal cell elevation. And again, make sure to join us right here as this weekend we're breaking down the Matrix movie step by step, privately, members only. So again, the fact that you defend your kingdom and grow your kingdom, that is the king's ambition. So we have the king's ambition, but we understand there are rules to the game that do not <laughs> that uh, do not care about anybody's wishes. So we use the right weapons, but with the um, with the with the right um, outcomes desired which is uh, the outcomes that good men are the ones who are going to rule this world rather than psychopaths and sociopaths who are immune to society's programming because their brains is different that's why the good men with the right brains must shed all that weight of that stupid uh, society's programming and therefore We do not accept this rotten world. We are replacing it with a brand new, brave new world. But we understand you cannot replace it by being Mr. Nice Guy, Ned Flanders, and being like, hello, guys, we love you. Come." No, human beings do not work this way. The lizard brain was not created that way. So instead of having a banana that you're going to hit the assailants with on the head, instead, you take your absolute... (laughs) ultimate flamethrower napalm mix with nuclear radiation and fuck them up for real for real because that is real power the this is wrong with the world 100 that is wrong with the world all the killing is wrong all the wars are wrong and it reminds me i asked a dr john domartini who's an amazing human um and i always used to ask on my podcast What's one thing that's wrong with the world that you'd like to change? And everyone's got their opinions. And he's the only person that looked me in the eye and said, there is nothing wrong with the world. world. We spoke about that. We spoke about it a lot. That this being content is part of slave morality. It's uh, what they call amor fati. Fuck all of that. We are resistant. We are defiant. Fuck it. We are willing to die for 
the uh, you know that get rich or die trying in us it's either we rule the world or we die in the process of building it but because we are eternal kings we never die but there is no other option there is no other option literally who are you going to trust the masters that have literally all the benefit from keeping you a slave or yourself who benefits from becoming a master trust yourself build your kingdom and you are more qualified if you think but it's not me i don't have the experience so what the elites have the only experience they have is that they were born to the right daddy who took them to the right uh, ivy league schools and then the delusional confidence of thinking that they should be prime ministers kings and whatever what's the qualification of king charles like for real for real what is his qualification nothing <laughs> nothing he's just attending some ceremonies and, uh, you know, got some princesses, <laughs> was uh, sleeping with some princesses. That's it. Like, literally, there is nothing that qualifies him more than you. You know more about the plight of the masses and the struggles they have than they do. And therefore, you can build the universe that is more equitable while he is in his bubble, never having faced that. Yeah. So this is a real paradox to me that there are things that we're fighting to change because they're wrong. You know, the basic things we can all agree, killing, rape, you know, extreme poverty, they're all wrong. And yet we're also on the other side of it saying everything is perfect and beautiful. No, fuck all that. That is turning the other cheek to the <laughs> to the rapist who's clapping your cheek. That's going to prison and getting gang raped and then be like, everything is perfect. Let me just bend over even more so that they enjoy my booty hole more. Be kind. Be kind to your enemies and let them enjoy your booty hole. Fuck all of that. No. We understand two things. Your um, promised land, your vision of reality, as when you go through the exercises, you will get those answers, is justified because you chose it. There is no reason for reason. A God doesn't explain himself to his uh, worshipers. He says, I say this because I'm the one true God. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> You've seen it. Look at every one of the religious figures, even in the covenant, the supposed covenants of the Israelites, what did they say? Go kill the Amalekites. Why? <laughs> because, <laughs> because God told us. Why did he tell us? Because he's strong. <laughs> That's it. Look, just check out the old, you know, Jewish religion. What was the explanation of any of the things that uh, the Jewish God told them to do? Any of the uh, killings or the taking over of people? People are chilling and they come and say, look, we're going to take your bitches and we're going to take your land and we're going to take everything. Why? Because our God told us to. Why did he say that? Not because he's just and fair. Because he's strong. <laughs> Literally, it's always. I'm <laughs> always like that. No justification. I'm strong. And therefore, I <laughs> we're taken over. <laughs> that, that was always. In many, many religions, you see them. Gods, whether you think about the Anunnakis or all that, they're always the justifications. Why did, for example, Hammurabi write the rules and the laws of that? Because... I'm the king and I'm strong, so you have to obey. <laughs> That's it. He doesn't need to justify and say, you know, it's because it's good for you for this. No, they don't say it. So you want your dream <laughs> life because you can get it. Why? Because you mastered primal status elevation and therefore you're strong, you're powerful. And so you take what is yours in this world and understanding that the pathway to go there is what works instead of trying to imagine a world that is so uh, pacifist. It's not. The world is not pacifist. That uh, that uh, whole philosophy is a pacifier given to the Popsock peasants to keep them babies. What it is, and, you know, if, uh, maybe humanity is meant to have wars. Maybe it's meant, because, you know, Animals don't judge each other for killing each other. It's good, it's bad. It's like, you're me, I need to survive, I'm eating you. That's exactly what I said. Look at every religion. Every god there was like, we're taking over and growing uh, this uh, religion and conquering land. Why? Because I'm a god, I'm a strong. That's all. <laughs> there is no justification of like, morally, morally, this makes sense that we should conquer other people. No, it never, it never happened. The whole morality thing came after the enlightenment were those people you've seen it i've shown you jean-jacques rousseau and i've shown you in that ryan chapman live stream check it out search on this channel ryan chapman primal status to see it they were saying like the founding fathers of the idea of democracy they were writing we must force people to become free 
Like, <laughs> is that democracy? Yes. They were like, we are bringing freedom to these people and we're going to force this shit out of them <laughs> to be free. Does it sound like they uh, were such Pollyanna? No, they were like, we're going to war. We're going to indoctrinate these people, create within them a patriotic identity so that they become useful uh, warriors for our uh, uh, army and our nation. And anybody who doesn't want democracy, we're going to fight them and force them to be free <laughs> and force them <laughs> to be democratic. Does that sound... No, humanity is creating all kinds of nonsense just to go above the fact that to, if you look at reality as it is, it has always been that there are no rights that might makes right always and forever. Why are billionaires or BlackRock or those companies able to make money hand over fist? Is it because they know how to do business better? They offer better service? No, they're monopolists. What is monopoly? Might makes right uh -huh. windows. So many antitrust laws might make right uh, Apple, if you think, but look, the antitrust laws are a, a reason why to show, no, that is whitewashing and the lobbyists make sure it happens in rare cases. Do, do you experience that paradox? So in, in my first book, I wrote a, a thought experiment that I called the eraser test, okay? And the eraser test was a simple, I was still at Google X at the time and I basically sort of faked the idea that I have invented the technology uh, that would allow you to uh, pinpoint a point in your history, in your past, hmm, with actual, ac you know, accurate precision and erase that point from space time, not from your memory, but from space time, as if that. Anyway, just for you to understand that if you change one thing, I know a lot of the good men who have grown in unfortunate situations and with a lot of trauma wish it didn't happen but understand something fundamental if you change anything even a small thing within your life the whole thing would have changed you wouldn't be you today and you might wonder but i wish i wasn't me well <laughs> that means you have so much head trash you need to eliminate it it could have been that you never met this channel you never discovered your destiny to master the trainings and primal sets elevation and then you would be a happy, <laughs> a happy cow that is getting slaughtered. It's, it will be totally a surprise to you, uh, a total black swan event. You've seen in that uh, in that book, the black swan, the story of the chicken that is getting fed and fattened every day by the farmer and it thinks oh my god the farmer is such a nice guy i love him and those are your bosses and the elites that are giving you a job right now or whatever you think yo my business they're fattening me and you keep getting fed every day and you're roaming in the farm and you're enjoying the sunshine and you're thinking this is heaven this is paradise and bam and one day he comes <laughs> cuts your throat slits your throat leaves you bleeding on the floor you're like what happened what you are a nice guy for so long one that is the destiny of poop sock peasants <laughs> and two that is the same situation of you thinking that you wish you changed something in your life you might have been someone who never comes across this you will never be ready to use this because you are content and remember good is the enemy of great if your life is good enough you will never have your dream life because you have no motivation to do it so if you have pain that pain can be the beginning of you starting the charge cycle to grow your container and begin the beneficial habit and the virtual cycle of conquest but anyway do not wish for things to be different use that to be stronger it is an absolute asset king a wishing for time machines is such a futile sentiment it is it is very feminine <laughs> even things i thought were horrible tragedies as they were happening all turned out to be more fuel for my bonfire but i couldn't see it at the time it's a king thing exactly and this is the mindset of the kings do you see how the invictus kings thing we have the wisest most potent <laughs> deities in the universe we are the <laughs> the uh Elohim circle and Elohim means by definition <laughs> the group of gods although some people say oh it's a it's a it's a uh, it means multiple gods but we use it as meaning one god no we are all the invictus kings and you know you that can right? buy a lot of allies with one of these how do you buy <laughs> well because they agree on the be merry so the exchange of be merries and the constant cooperation is that goodwill buying it's not about cash Okay. And I asked the readers and I asked around 20,000 people when I used to do workshops in, in person, uh, um, you know, pinpoint one of the most painful, bad moments in your life. Okay. Uh, you know, focus on it and remember it and remember how it felt. 
Now I will give you access to the eraser test once. Would you erase it? Okay. 100% of all of the listeners and all of the people in the workshop said, yes, I'd erase it. You know, that bully, that horrible boyfriend, you know, the death of my father and so on. And then I said, but the, 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 it's, this is not a limitation of the technology, but a, real, a realization of that technology is that when you erase it, you erase everything that happened as a result, right? That bully in school will also erase, erasing the bully will erase that, you know, a, a bus trip that where you sat next to your best friend. You would also erase the resilience that you learned as a result, you know, that, that horrible boyfriend will also erase your understanding of your self-worth and, you know, your current uh, uh, in um, appreciation of yourself that led you to your current uh, person in your life, right? Would you erase it? 99.9% .9 of the world, of, of the people I surveyed would say, no, no, hold on. If that's the case, then I'll keep it. Okay. You see, by the way, this is beautiful. This same similar thought uh, experiment was done by Nietzsche, which is the eternal recurrence uh, thought that he had is exactly similar to it. Uh, but in a different way where he says, if you look at your life and you think about your life, if would you live it again and again and again eternally and that's eternal recurrence or not up to you. But if you change something, it will be a totally different experience. And you should always strive to create a life that if you had to live it again and again and again, you'll be happy and satisfied with it a life that is your dream life on your terms. So again, he's not giving Nietzsche credit, which is okay. We speak about that you should take authority and ownership over everything so that you're the one true source. And again, nothing new under the sun. Nietzsche talked about it. I'm sure that Plato and the ancient philosophers talked about such things too. And in the end, all it leads to is you flexing your magician king and taking that primal status for it. I've ever had painful as it has been at the time is a blessing when you look back at it. Okay. Why? Because it's what makes you who you are. Now, going back to video games, hmm? the truth of the matter is that good and bad is a paradox. It's always good and bad. Okay. It's always neither good nor bad because it always this is great. This is the principle of the uh, concurrence of expansion and expansion and contraction from Buddhism, that anytime there is an expansion, there needs to be also a contraction. And they give you the example that when you breathe in air, you feel also a tightness that squeezes at the same time. So as your abdomen expands, as you breathe in air, you're also squeezing in at the same time that everything that when you're looking in this direction, you're also not looking in those directions, which means that this is a, a, the decreasing and this is increasing and the celebration though never stops. We are the exception. Our celebrations never decrease. But again, this is him taking a Buddhist principle of the, uh, uh, of the concurrence of expansion and contraction and just taking credit for it. Good. That's how uh, you build a be merry. That is a mix of all the patterns that your lizard brain has picked up that they represent the wisdom of the world. And then you find that your unique combination will still be a category of one because he's combining it with AI and therefore he's using something that will be the result and the outcome of volume two for you, where you clarify your tribe and be merry in a way that allows you to absolutely be in any SB monopoly, a category of one. This is the, this is the thing that is so hard to grasp in this world. Hmm? Everything just is. I'll, I'll tell you openly, my son, as he left the world is a very painful thought. Hmm? Today, 10 years later, when I get that thought, I feel that the bottom right hand side of my heart is missing. It really is a physical pain. Do you see that? This is the underdog phase and uh, uncommon commonalities with those who lost a loved one, as well as part of his Odyssey story. When I'm not thinking about it, it doesn't exist. Do you understand this? Yeah. Right before Ali left our world, hmm? Ali lived in Boston, where he was far away. You know, we're men. Yeah, we're men. So we spoke to each other. We texted each other every third day. Hey, buddy, you good? And he, he used to call me Fat Hobbit. So, <laughs> so, so, so he would text back and he says, yeah, Fat Hobbit. That's it. Right? And I was the happiest human being alive to know that he's okay. Hmm? We would meet every three months or so. Hmm? Now, he's a little further than Boston for a little longer. And the messages are not as easy. 
Hmm? But when you really think about it, hmm? if that thought is not in my head, nothing's wrong with life. You see, here's the problem. The problem is for you to be able to see something wrong with life, hmm? you have to turn it into a thought and keep it in your head and think about it, past or future, right? The very fact that you can do this means that there is nothing wrong right now. Because if there was a tiger in front of you right now, you wouldn't be thinking about past and future. This is in the power of now of uh, Eckhart Tolle. He gives a similar thought experiment. He's using tiger, but Eckhart Tolle used, uh, the, uh, used uh, a bear where he says, when you're confronted with a bear, there are only two outcomes. It's similar. Two outcomes. You either <laughs> die or you live. Either way, you don't have a problem as long as you are in the present moment. <laughs> it's, it's good. When you recognize where people take their ideas from, one, it shows you how easy it is. Two, it shows you don't need to reinvent the wheel. And three, it shows you that the power is in the repackaging. When you communicate things with a new private language and they're a new umbrella and a new monopoly, you are seen as fresh and new. Even if you think about the past, the philosophy of Osho, did he create anything? For the last 3,000 years, other sages have been saying the same thing. And yet he got 92 Rolls Royces and 92 concubines <laughs> and lived his dream life. It is the packaging and you being the one true Lord, you being the one true God is exactly how it works. Right? So yes, more morally, there are there is a lot wrong with other lives in the world today. There is so much injustice in the world today. But the fact that you're able to think about that means there is nothing wrong with your life right now. Okay, which means this is the biggest privilege and the biggest responsibility you've ever been given. Turn it, be merry and ten commandments it into a thought and dwelling about it is uh, the is the is the is the most irresponsible thing you can ever do. Okay, responsible behavior around the blessing of the fact that you and I have a, a roof on top of our heads, that we're safe, that we're having this wonderful conversation, that we're starting a friendship that will last for a long time. Hmm? The, 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 the blessing of that requires for you and I to look at this and say, I'm okay. What can I do? Who can I be to make this that I don't like go away? Now, my wonderful Ali, he, he was incredibly wise. I was, he was 14, maybe 15. I was larger than life. Chief business officer, Google X, money, uh, cars parked outside, everything that you can ever dream of, every sign of power. And hold on, I was chief business officer of Google. You don't understand the amount of power you have when you're a senior executive at Google. That's almost like a head of state, right? walks in Ali into the living room and he says, Papa, I have something to tell you, but I'm, I'm, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you upset. So I, I learned over time when he speaks, I listen. So I said, Habibi, tell me, what, what do you want to say? This is something else. This is when you die. <laughs> People turn you into a legend. And that's why we want that living legend status. Not like Van Gogh, who after he died, poor and broke, he became... We want it right now. So let's keep going. I'm going to fix the world. I said, what? what? Why, Habib? Why don't you have a spark? Hmm? Where's that ambition that we learn about in Harvard Business Review that, you know, unless you have a spark that you want to fix the world, you're, you're never even going to try. He said, Papa, I told you it's going to upset you. Hmm? You're never going to. We speak, uh, spoke about this, that when you go through the charge cycle and uh, as well as you clarify the life purpose that you're meant to have, your lizard brain is going to cheer for you, elevating your serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine in a way that makes you <laughs> be passionate and come across to your future super fans as having a spark. And they notice that signal and they think, I want a piece of that. And by associating with you, they will feel your be merry and your spark nonstop. You can only fix your little world, he said. He said, what do you mean? He said, look, 
you want to make the world a better place. You start no, all of this, I'm sure, is an illusion. No 14 years old boy who is living in Boston or whatever and being a trust fund daddy is going to speak as if he is the young reincarnation of the Dalai Lama. You make you a better person, and then maybe, just maybe, me and my sister will listen to you. Again, when you are 14, did you have these thoughts? 14 years old boys <laughs> don't think this way. When you are, when you've convinced us, then you can go to the rest of your friends and maybe they'll listen to you. Then maybe it's your department at work. Then maybe it's your company. Then maybe it's your country. Then maybe it's the world. And even then you're not going to fix it. Why? Because like you rightly said, Rob, the rules of the game, hmm? the game would be so, so boring if the game started, you pushed the controller forward and you waited 70 years and you died. What kind of learning and development is that what kind of achieving the best potential of yourself would that be right mm. the, the the truth of the matter is when we played video game when he was legendary and i wasn't hmm, i would start the game and i would run to the end of the game okay and he would put his controller down and say papa well, what are you doing and i'm like ali the end of the level is here let's go here and he was like who wants to go to the end of the level we're playing like you get to the end of the level of life and you die who wants that hmm? We're playing the game of life. He would go to the parts where there is a good frame stacking. This is belief engineering. And I would go like, but that doesn't make sense, Yali. Why are you going to the most po difficult part of the game? And he would say, this is where all the fun is. This is where you develop and grow and become a better gamer. So, so the idea of life, and I, I know you and I agree on that, is that in the physical world that we live in, this game is about presenting you with challenges hmm, that will sand you down and make you the best version of yourself, the best version of your non-physical self, of your consciousness. This is great. A great reframe that represents the ninth training of the brainwashing Bible used in a story 5C plus M. To deal with this chaos in a way that enables you with calm and contentment and peace to look at the game and say, I'm never going to fix the world, but I can fix my little world. That this is it. Hmm? The, 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 you know, in the West, we have that idea of a life purpose. I'm going to give a laptop to every child, or I'm going to solve world hunger. Good luck. Good luck. Hmm? The true mission of life is I'm going to wake up today and I'm going to have the absolute best conversation I can ever have with Rob. Okay, I'm bound to say some wrong things. I'm bound to say th some right things. But my intention is I will say the best that I can say. Now, when you see the game of life that way, it becomes much easier. Hmm? It becomes, yes, there is a lot of suffering. There is a lot of injustice. Hmm? Sitting in a corner and complaining about them is not going to fix a thing. Feeling the compassion for those people and finding within you the responsibility to get up and do the tiniest thing you can to make a difference. That's what... We change the whole system. No tiny things around here. We have that king's ambition of being titans, not tiny. The tiniest thing you can, you become better. So life sends you a bigger. No, this is still addicted to the paradigm of real value. You becoming better doesn't make a difference. Again, <laughs> just think about it. All those charlatans that have no real value, what they became better at is brainwashing people and using lizard brain communication and primal cell salivation. That's all. There are many, many goofies with a check. <laughs> many, many people that have nothing. Elon Musk is an idiot. He's not a genius, but he built the aura of genius and he is able to impact the world, meet world's uh, heads of states. If you try to build real value to become the next Einstein, you're not that. <laughs> Why the fuck? I mean, you can have super fans. You can hire Einsteins. Remember that Brad Lee, when he was flexing in the live stream that I broke about him, you can search Brad Lea, Lee, L-E-A, uh, on uh, live stream on this channel in order to find it. What he said, I have uh, like uh, three PhDs, two MBAs, and uh, <laughs> multiple Ivy League diplomas. And they were like, what, what, how? And he said, well, I'm rich. I hired them and they do all the work for me in the same way. You can win, collect souls. Your super fans will have qualifications and skills that you can supplant. But what matters more than anything is the ability to collect those souls, to build those universes. 
And then you will have the army by you that you can do the division of labor, your own sovereign territory and land. And that's how it works. Again, uh, if you think about Napoleon, he did not need to master every single one of the weapons. He did need to master. No, he had generals and he had uh, people who specialized in the different uh, army divisions and weaponry and he didn't need to do it himself he needed to go take the upper umbrella scale of being the up outmost strategist which is the primal status superior yourself to your daughter and, and son to your department and so on and so forth and that's the whole game eventually 75 years later you die okay what is left if you have any spiritual belief what is left is a consciousness that is elevated Okay, whatever happens with that consciousness afterwards is a debate that will never be proven by the scientific method or any other logic. Okay, do you, do you live again? Do you come uh, on another mission? Do you hold the controller and play another game? Do you, do you go to heaven and hell? We know, nobody knows, but it's irrelevant. What is relevant is you came to this life. Hmm? You've, you, you found a very interesting, challenging game. You became the best video gamer you can ever become hmm? by playing the game fully not complaining about the game design. Hmm? And then you come out the other end and say, wow, that was an incredible journey. Promised land, belief engineering, good shit. I disagree with the low level of ambition, but for the structures is there. The others that were greedy enough to, to, uh, to, to kill, hmm? that's their game. And yes, of course it hurts you that, they, that there is so much injustice in the world. It's the one thing that gets to my heart beyond anything else. Hmm? What's happening and why you shouldn't at all copy what he's doing. Remember when you're starting to penetrate the impermeable, <laughs> the, the uh, very, very strong membrane and the glass ceiling that is stopping you from reaching your dream life, you need to be sharp and piercing using the outlaw king weaponry. And therefore, you need that aggressive belligerence of being hyper masculine and attacking, attacking, attacking your daily Ws. Only once you reach a level of primal status that you are proud of and happy with you can instead become the harmony maker the peacemaker king right now he's speaking as a peacemaker king if you start from there you will be ignored taken for granted and never ever succeed this is only once you are seen as a super god and you already cemented your power that you can add more of this peacemaker king to it we will never do that because when you do this you just stay at the same level of primal status we want more always more bigger dreams and memories this is someone who retired and wants to just keep his uh, primal stats intact by using the the peacemaker harmony maker uh, uh, alliance builder the nice guy only when you are at the top is appreciated if you're not at the top mr nice guy gets absolutely crushed i can make it better is to be calm and peaceful and contented to accept that life is shit and to make it a little less shit for anyone that comes my way so i have 412 questions left <laughs> <laughs> with what, you. what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna surrender those questions to the universe on the belief that maybe we'll meet again I would be, I'd, I'd, be, I'd, I'd answer 412 questions to meet you again. <laughs> Thank you. You're the man. So I'm going to have to go straight to the last one. Yeah. Um, this show is called Disruptors. Yeah. What does the word disruptive mean to you? Uh, it, is a, um, it is a needed approach to fixing a world that's sometimes misunderstood and accordingly uh, makes it worse. So, so disrupting is the idea of finding some kind of a flow and changing its direction. Uh, and in, in itself, hmm, it's neither good nor bad. Sadly, however, it can be used, again, like you said on our conversation, it can be used to make the world better and it can be used to make the world worse. It can, make, it can be used to make your own life better and it can be used to make your own life worse, right? And, and, and the idea here is not to blame disruption at all. The idea here is to understand that disruption is that hammer that we have on the table 
mm, that we can we can use in whichever way we want. Mm? Good use of metaphor is they always just go through the skeptical side of the mind and just impregnate <laughs> impregnated with epiphanies. I I followed the Silicon Valley definition of disruption, which was I'm smarter than the other guy. I'm going to find some way to disrupt the flow. And in doing so, I will be a successful businessman. I will make more money. I will make more, uh, b a bigger name for myself. Hmm? Uh, and I, you know, for many, 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 many years, I continued on that path until I realized that more tech is not good for the world, that more advancement is not good. For Notice what he said. He used to be in his underdog phase, a follower, and now he believes that the current Be Merry and the current vision of the reality and map of reality is broken, and he understood a different one. This is building and the beginning of the fork in the road that builds your new universe. Uh, I th no, I'll take that back. That more advancement that is not ethical is worse for the world than less advancement at all. Mm. And that the real answer is we need to get the ethics right before we continue to advance. Okay. Mm. And, and, I, and I think the reality is at that point, I became the biggest disruptor I've ever been, which, which was for me to disrupt my own flow and stop and say, that's not it. That's I believed the promise. And I did well. I mean, if you think about some of my work at Google, I've, I've brought knowledge and and, and, and search and technology and small businesses empowerment and so on to 4 billion people in 103 languages across. The King Flex, did he do it himself? He was the CEO, the one who's playing golf and uh, doing the speeches, but still taking credit for it, builds primal status, good humble brag. Say I, I mean, I worked in the team that did or I led some. Okay, now he's bringing back the humbleness. But yes, you've seen it. Uh, even Ram Sawami or whatever his name, that presidential candidate says, I developed the drug that will do... No, he didn't, but this is good. So when he says, I worked in the team, that, that don't do that. Do the first part. I created everything. Take credit for all because then you have more impact and opportunity to change the world. If you shoot yourself in the foot by trying to be humble, the other guys are not trying to be humble and they will uh, out king you and they will take over and become the decision makers that impact your life because you'd wanted to be a nice guy, humble. They didn't and therefore they became your lords and they will lord up and down on you. And it, that was useful. Hmm? There You've seen it. Donald Trump doesn't do that. And that's why he became the president. And this guy or people like him are not. So let's keep going. An online training, hopefully. Let's if you disrupt the wrong flow, no, let's go. Is we need to get the ethics right. Before let's go. Where of disruption. Let's go. In its direction. Uh, and in, in itself, hmm, it's neither good nor bad. Sadly, however, it can be used, again, like you said on our conversation, it can be used to make the world better and it can be used to make the world worse. It can, make, it can be used to make your own life better and it can be used to make your own life worse, right? And, and, and the idea here is not to blame disruption at all. The idea here is to understand that disruption is that hammer that we have on the table hmm? that we can, we can use in whichever way we want. Hmm? Uh, for many years, I. I followed the Silicon Valley definition of disruption, which was, I'm smarter than the other guy. I'm going to find some way to disrupt the flow. And in doing so, I will be a successful businessman. I will make more money. I will make more, uh, b a bigger name for myself. Hmm? Uh, and I, you know, for many, 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 many years, I continued on that path until I realized that more tech is not good for the world that more advancement is not good for the world. Hmm? It's, uh, I th no, I'll take that back. That more advancement that is not ethical is worse for the world than less advancement. 
who defines what is ethical. He's dropping his be merry. That word of ethical is a him saying that he's the one who is ethical. And that's a part of the peacemaker king flexes. And then if you define what is ethical, you take control of the conversation and you win. Because remember, politicians always say whoever defines the terms wins the debate. And therefore him be the one who speaks about ethics and then defining it makes him win the, the battle. And then he advances within the war of primal sex elevation. The real answer is we need to get the ethics right before we continue to advance. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I think the reality is at that point, I became the biggest disruptor I've ever been, which, which was for me to disrupt my own flow and stop and say, that's not it. That's, I believed the promise and I did well. I mean, if you think about some of my work at Google, I've, I've brought knowledge and, 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 and search and technology and small. This is good. You should take credit like business that. empowerment and so on to 4 billion. And do not try to belittle yourself, say later, no, I just worked in the team. Well, that part he should delete. But anyway, when you arrive to a knife primal status and you want to be a peacemaker who sustains, you can make mistakes like that because you're not, you want to stagnate and not progress. Why does he want to stagnate? It's part of that stupid retirement ideology that tells you, oh, take it easy. You don't need the challenges. You don't need to go through the charge cycle. And this is what happens. You weaken yourself so that you don't go higher. Languages across the world. And I, I, when I say I, I mean I worked in the team that did or I led some of that team. And it, that was useful. Hmm? But another photo sharing app, you know, is TikTok really bringing that much more to the world than Instagram? And Instagram is Instagram bringing much at all? Hmm? And, and the question becomes, are we disrupting for the wrong reason or the right reason? If you disrupt the world, if you disrupt the wrong flow, you're amazing. If you disrupt the right flow for your own benefit, yeah, I'd ask you to reconsider. Mm. So what are you working on right now that you want us to check out? Um, and where can we follow you? And um, where should we go? <laughs> I'm, I'm working on a lot, actually. So I, uh, I decided because of AI to flip my creative process. That's the biggest project I have this year. I used to write books and then bring them to humanity, uh, you know, in other formats, in book format and other formats. This year I'm flipping that. Uh, I'm recording everything in video first, which is a human conversation that AI. Do you see that? Do you see that? That's what we speak about. Earlier on, he used to write books first. Now he moved to video. He's moving to video because it's human conversation. And what does human conversation do? One, when you use that, you're using that ability to communicate lizard brain to lizard brain. AI can never take over. AI can never dethrone you. You become the signal that stands out among the noise, like the sun stands out among uh, the solar system. And second, he said it's a human to human conversation, which is part of building parasocial relationships. This is correct on point. It's a king thing. And that's why move away from being shy about hiding yourself or your face. No, man, go get that training that drains out this brainwashing replaces you would be the one true God who basks in the ability of being seen, being heard and being worshiped. And then you will not <laughs> be pushing on the brake as you escalate the top of Mount Everest. Instead, you will teleport to the top and then make it easy to go higher and higher. Uh, and then hopefully when I've done, uh, you know, I'm working on finding love, for example, a, a series of books that I've written many times, but now I'm releasing them as a as a as a, an online training hopefully by q2 uh, where basically it's about finding love and keeping love uh, a very important topic in my mind in the current times uh, and then when i've done enough of that and and interfaced with people enough in webinars and other formats then i'll give it to an ai to write a book so th that that has flipped uh, my podcast is very dear to my heart you you know you've been a wonderful guest uh, slow-mo really reaches tens and tens and tens of thousands of people every day. I'm starting another one, uh, hopefully by Q2 as well in Arabic, which is a region that is highly starving for, for wisdom that comes from any other source uh, other than religion. Uh, I am working on um, a lot of initiatives around spreading AI. 
uh, and it's uh, and and my biggest book launch this year is Unstressable in April. Unstressable is an attempt to take a million people out of stress every year. Do you see that? That's a king ambition and a promised land. Unstressable attempt to take. Uh, look how many people he trying to attempt. If you don't have this, if your ambition is small that you can create it by yourself, you're a pop sock peasant. You need an elite team of uh, killers by your side. The Invictus Kings are the way. Again, make sure to check this out. Read the text at primalsess.com and join us in the membership. As this weekend, we are breaking down the Matrix movie nonstop starving for for wisdom that comes from any other source uh, other than religion uh, i am working on um, a lot of initiatives around spreading ai uh, and it's uh, and and my biggest book launch this year is unstressable in april last let's see now the promised land or the goal Stressable is an attempt to take a million people out of stress every year a million people out of stress every year. Who speaks like that? Good king's ambition, mythical creature creation. So this has been quite a bit of work and uh, we're interestingly doing it more in the corporate world than we are in the, uh, in the um, you know, individual consumer landscape because I think a lot of the stress comes from the corporate world. So we might as well try to solve it there. And lots more. Uh, people can find me on mogaudet.com or they can find me on Instagram, mo underscore gaudet, or they can find me on my podcast, Slomo, uh, S L O M O. Uh, but yeah, on, on YouTube, uh, everywhere, really. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but find the, me on the internet. But, <laughs> but, but, but the, I mean, the, the idea for me is not to find me as much as to spread the message. I mean, I, I, all, I, all I ask people is if you've heard something today that you think is valuable, just tell someone else, you know, just click on share, share that podcast with someone else and you've done your role. Uh, it, it seems to me that we are at a very pivotal point in the history of humanity where if we don't start to spread the positives, Good, Lizard Brand Squeeze, and giving them a big, big mission. We are at a pivotal point where if you share, you get, <laughs> you will do your part. What does that do? It exposes him to more people so that he can collect more souls that would resonate with him. To be avalanched by a lot of negatives. So mm. it might as well be your turn right now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so big context change now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the gravity of the battle means nothing to those at peace. What does that mean to you, Mo? It means everything, really. <laughs> what a way to start our conversation. Uh, so I had a wonderful human being, a gift that came into my life that was uh, my son Ali. Odyssey story and he's explaining uh, one of the mantras of his Be Merry right now. Uh, I think the biggest gifts I've ever been given were Ali and Aya, my daughter. And uh, Ali uh, was an incredibly special human being. He was very, very wise, very kind, very loving. Uh, from a very young age, from, you know, from age eight, I think I started to observe how valuable his input was into my life. And I sort of had him as my coach at the time. Uh, and then by age 16, I remember vividly that I used to say that when I grow older, I want to be like Ali. He was so wise. Uh, he was also very fun and playful and easygoing with life. And he, uh, had a tattoo, I think when he was 14 or something, uh, on his back, uh, that had, um, an, uh, um, you know, a, a, a turtle carrying the world in something I called the, I think the flat world or something, some novel of some sort. And around it was written, the gravity of the battle means nothing to those at, at peace. And, and Ali Habibi, he... What kind of family is that? Like a 14 years old boy getting a lifelong decision of a tattoo? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> let's put it back. He said, anyway, let's keep going. He said his son, when he was 14, he was getting this uh, tattoo. <laughs> this is not good parenting in the sense that his brain is not even developed enough. If he cannot snip snip himself and turn himself into a fanboy at 14, he shouldn't be getting tattoos at 14 neither once right he used his allowance for it he somehow never really wanted you know he felt bad he used to tell his mom uh, that he used my money to uh, to get that tattoo and that you know 
he wasn't ready to tell me about it. Of course, she told me the next morning. Uh, and I was like, that's okay. Uh, it was five or... So at 14, he gets a tattoo without telling his father anything about it. Is that the kind of father you want to be? Someone who your children will go do whatever and then decide on their own to do life altering things before their brains are ready? What the fuck? Again, when you're king, you have commandments. And if you have no respect at home, you are disrespected everywhere. And that's why you see his humble uh, peacemaker attitude is getting him no respect. When you're a real king and you have an outlaw a killer instinct, the respect is commensurate with your level of ability to conquer and to be able to actually apply those conquest uh, uh, 100 day plans. Peter that sadly my son was uh, in his uh, scrubs, you know, on the operating table, uh, getting ready to go into a, uh, uh, into a very simple surgical operation, uh, an appendix removal. And he sits up, uh, and so his back shows from the scrubs. And I see the tattoo for the first time. The gravity of the battle means nothing to those at peace. And then he goes into the operating room and sadly there were five mistakes um, that happened by the surgeon and Ali dies. Uh, you know, four hours later, we know that Ali is gone. And in a very interesting way, the, f the very last thing he told me was the gravity of the battle means nothing to those at peace. And uh, I remember when I saw it for the first time, uh, I found myself saying, uh, I approve you, Habibi. I, I, Habibi is my love in Arabic. So I, I said, I approve you, Habibi. It's really pretty. Uh, but also, believe it or not, you know, just see it, his, seeing it was really my support for the battle that was about to happen. And, uh, and I actually, f surprisingly, had a lot of peace. Uh, I found peace almost instantly. There is a finality to death that breaks you or empowers you there is a, a very interesting five c plus m right now you can't bring them back and so in a very interesting way instead of uh of fighting life and the universe you were talking about that on on slow mo on my podcast when you when we when we recorded instead of fighting the universe you have to work with the universe somehow and Yes, instead of fighting and masturbating about the notion that, oh, be Mr. Nice Guy and you will win, just be yourself. Yes, be the best version, the most potent primal stats version of yourself. And then understand, we change the world, but the path to there needs to be aligned with the laws of uh, lizard brain communication and what the lizard brain responds to. You love so much. Again, the opposite is going, let's say, to Japan and trying to speak uh, to them in Urdu or trying to speak to them in Swahili and then wondering, why can they understand me? Why can't people just do what I want and then you're homeless and nobody understands what you want and all your needs are deprived? But if you spoke Japanese or you spoke to the lizard brain using the lizard brain communication, grammar and vocabulary, then people will listen. You'll get what you want. And that is a simple alignment with the pragmatic rules of the universe. And myself deciding to, um, instead of fight the universe, to say, OK, my son left, his physical form left, uh, but at least I can keep his essence alive. And so I took what he taught me through the years he said, spent with me which was mostly about finding happiness and, and calm and peace in life. And I wrote a book, uh, Solve for Happy, that was, uh, this was the first page of the book, The Gravity of the Battle Means Nothing to Those at Peace. And yeah, and I thought to myself, if I could get his essence, what he taught me, and just put it in a book and spread it across the world, then, you know, through six degrees of separation in a, you know, 70, 100 years, a little, a little bit of Ali will be part of everyone. And it happened. Soul for Happy became a mega bestseller. Uh, we've affected as a small team. It's not me uh, alone. Um, you know, the lives of tens of millions of people. And Ali, believe it or not, I mean, I get so many messages almost every day of people saying, I love Ali, which is amazing when you really think about it. You know, life gives you shit, but eventually something beautiful comes out of it. Uh, so yeah. 
uh, the gravity of the battle doesn't ever become easier when you lose someone you love. Uh, but it means nothing to those at peace, I believe. So I have this belief, and I, I risk quite a lot of hate for saying it. Why does he say that when you have haters, you are seen as more legit? That's why he says, I risk a lot of hate for saying that. I've not experienced loss like that yet. I'm really scared yet, of it happening. Yet, yet is such a profound way mm. of saying it. Yeah, mm. yeah, I understand. Because I know it's coming. It has to come. Um, yeah. But I'm going to say this anyway. Well, no, I'm going to ask it as a question. Were there benefits, positives, and gifts in your son's passing? Damn, what a question. <laughs> Uh, it was the best thing that ever happened. Really is. I mean, think about it this way. If you knew Ali, if I had asked him before he was going into that operating room, I had told him, Ali Habibi, would you choose to die for 50 million people to be happier? He would have literally said, kill me right now. You see, there is... There is a lot that resides on your understanding of life and death, by the way. And, and I really think that if your belief system is that Ali vanished, then you're in trouble. You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't put up. Arguing for his be merry, good shit. And his life made, made 50 million people happy. Uh, you wouldn't be able to put up with it. But if your belief and I... And, and to me, it's not a belief. To me, it's science. That there are two, two parts to us. There is a physical form that navigates the physical world. And there is a consciousness or a, you know. Notice what he said. Upgrade added to your notebook. He said, it's not my belief. It's science. Does it mean anything? Science is theories that are not yet falsified. There is no truth or fact in science. It's all best guesstimates that seem to explain reality, but seem is the operative keyword. But that's a good thing. So upgrade, you say, it's not my belief, it's science. And then everybody shuts the fuck up and you seem to be talking about things that everybody cannot argue with and they just accept them at face value. The soul that's unaffected by the physical world, then the assets that you're given in this physical world is about delivering a mission, okay? And Ali and I, we used to play lots of video games. And, uh, you know, he was legendary in every possible way. He was what <laughs> video games, you know, he was the target that video games were made for. Now I am, by the way, after he left, I, I became so much better to honor him. Uh, and I'm legendary. I, 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 I will tell you, hands down, I'm the one that killed whoever is listening yesterday. I'm, I'm the one that killed. Good King Flex with a trickster. An understanding of a video game is a very unusual uh, view of life because there is a resemblance in the idea of the avatar that's on the screen hmm, that might be going through a very harsh environment, but it's just on the screen when the real player is me, right? Unaffected by what's happening on the screen. Similarly, if you take the analogy, if you have a consciousness that is not trapped within space-time, but a physical form that is trapped within space-time, uh, you know, the value of your consciousness as... Explaining a metaphysical map of reality, which again, makes people feel and think he knows the world, he knows what he's talking about, we feel lost, let's follow him, is all aligned with a mass movement psychology. Ending is much more valuable than your physical form residing another year or two. If, if you really think about it this way, everything changes. And when we used to play games, um, there would be parts of a mission where it is so difficult, there are so many enemies, the terrain is not favorable, where the only way to win the mission would be for one of us to jump in, kill a lot of enemies, and then die. And then the other one would shoot the remaining enemies off and, and we continue with the game, right? And I think what happened on, you know, in 2014 in July when Ali left was perhaps a bit like that, that our world is so unhappy and 
somehow what Ali taught me, what we built together, was very valuable. Okay? And in a very interesting way, if your physical form is just part of the assets that you get and that your mission here is to leave a very serious impact on this uh, on this world, whatever your impact is, by the way, it doesn't have to be massive like they advertise in Harvard Business Review. Hmm? If the way to get to that impact is to leave your physical form behind and, you know, elevate your consciousness, then it's a very worthwhile investment. And I think that's exactly what happened. Ali decided to, you know, to just jump in and give his life for a mission to be kickstarted in a way that affected the world. What's most interesting, if you really think about it, is that when we used to play, if he, of course, if the mission was difficult and he was a legendary, what would end up happening is he would be the one that would jump in and kill the enemies first, of course, right? If I jumped in in the middle of 20 enemies, I would die after killing the first one. He would kill 16 before he dies, right? But then after he leaves the game, he would be sitting next to me and saying, Papa, no, no, go left, go left, no, no. And then eventually he would even pick my controller from my hand and go like, man, you're going to make us lose. And he would shoot the remaining four enemies, right? And then give me the controller back. In a very interesting way, I feel that this is exactly what happened. I mean, if you read Soul for Happy, and I, I know a lot of authors will say that shit, but I really, really, it was my experience that a lot of that book I don't know if I, I don't know if I knew that stuff before he died, right? I, I remember vividly there was a part of the book that was called The Game, three pages, uh, that I woke up one day at 4 a.m. in the morning, half asleep. Uh, I was so inspired. I sat down, I, write, I wrote those three pages. And I then saved them on the desktop and forgot that I did it, went back to sleep, was completely, you know, sleepy, so I didn't know that I did it. And then 10 days later, I double click, I find that file on my desktop. So I double click on it. What's the game? And I promise you, I started reading. And I was like, oh shit, who, who wrote this shit? Like, this is really good shit. Okay. And honestly, and I, I you know, it was so profound for me. I gave it to my, uh, my uh, editor at the time, amazing human being, uh, Peter Gozardi. And Peter was like, this is incredible. Like, how did you write this? Hmm? No clue. Nobody ever edited a single Exactly. And actually, this is inside you. Maybe you didn't experience this before, but when you unlock those uh, connections that show your lizard brain and give it permission to unlock your fingerprint abilities to create new things that are blind spots to other people, but are simple to you. Everyone will say, this is some really good shit. Who is this guy? And we go through that. It's easier than you think. You already have it inside you. It's just not packaged properly, not packaged in the primal status way. Exactly as it was. And you can sort of feel that there is a layer to the world that we live in that's a little more nuanced, if you want, than just our striving in the physical world, if you know what I mean. There is maybe a bit of a connection to our consciousness, our unified consciousness, mine and his, that works in interesting ways. So sometimes I feel he's holding the controller altogether. And your question was, is it, is it a good thing? I'll tell you, I know that my son is in a very good place. I really do. I mean, with the amount of love pouring on him, he must be in a good place. Uh, I know that uh, I have never been in a better place in my life. I, I feel that my life is worthwhile. And, I, and I'll tell you that 50, 60 million people have been affected positively as a result. You have to accept that despite the pain that will never leave my heart, there has been a lot of good in this. So your mission is to make a billion people happy. But is the purpose of life happiness? It's the modus operandi of life. Uh, let me try to explain. Uh, a lot of people will say, I will strive, I will spend my life to be happy. I, didn't, I don't think that's, uh, you know, I, th I think they'd, un they, they'd mid un misunderstood happiness. We, we sometimes in the modern world mix happiness with fun, mix happiness with physical pleasure, right? Mix happiness with entertainment. Not, none of those is happiness. And we can come back to that if you want and, and analyze what happiness itself mm. is. But let's put it as such. You, when you're happy, 
Hmm? You are by definition more productive because you don't waste cycles on your negative thoughts. You're by definition more effective uh, because you can focus on whatever it is that is making you happy and, you know, do it better. You are more liked by others. So by definition, you have less resistance in life. Hmm? You are uh, more liked by others. So they gather around you and they try to listen to what you have to say. There are so many benefits that are good for humanity that come from people who are happy and not people who are grumpy. Right? You, you can... You Promised land, all of it, good shit. Between, uh, you know, Steve Jobs, which was an incredible entrepreneur, uh, but was so grumpy and control freakish that everyone is in, in his organization felt like a, a cog in a big machine and, you know, struggled to, to deliver. They were delivering by the sheer power of him pushing them. And Larry Page and Sergey Brin in Google, where we loved everything we did. Like, I didn't need anyone to tell me. I promise you, I, I, many times in my career, I said, I, I, I'll pay for this. I'll pay for that job, like, because of how much joy it was bringing me, right? There's no right and wrong. This is what we create. It is about creating intrinsic motivations for your super fans to love you and worship you rather than being <laughs> surrounded by gold diggers and people who want something and therefore this extrinsic motivation that as soon as something bad happens, they all disband. We want those who stand with you because they believe in you as the one true God, worship you and believe in your religion that you're creating. And therefore, no matter what happens, you do not lose. That's the weakness of building a business instead of building a cult. We are taking the real strong way that allows people to absolutely, no matter the persecution, to stay steadfast, believing in you. Difference between the kind of productivity that you gain as an individual, not as an organization. Steve ran an incredible organization. Uh, but as an individual, the kind of drive and energy and deliverable that you can bring when you're excited, you know, when you enjoy what you do. If that is the reality, that we are more productive, more effective in the world, better for ourselves and others when we're happy, then happiness becomes a little bit like health, right? If you get a, a bit of a sore throat, you tell yourself, something's not right with me. This is not my optimum way of performance and delivery in life. I need to slow down and get some vitamins and take care of myself so that I can survive and strive and thrive in life, right? Similarly, if you feel that you're a little anxious or a little uh, depressed or a little, uh, you know, uh, um, too worried and too occupied with something negative, you should have the same feeling. Something's not right with me. And so I should sit down and work on it. Hmm? so that I am in my optimum state of survival, thriving, and, you know, and, and engagement in the world. So, so in a very interesting way, a lot of people will say that happy, you know, is happiness the purpose of life? No, your happiness is your duty so that you do the best you can in life, so that you're healthy mentally in a way that allows you to be, to be the best version of yourself, mm. right? Now, what is happiness in that case? It's not going to a party to jump up and down. It's not, you know, going to the beaches of Australia and leaving life behind. Happiness is a form, and, and you said that again on, on my podcast, happiness is a form of being okay with the universe as it is, right? All of your success, Rob, and what you teach me is about the idea of, uh, you know, I don't fight, I don't battle the universe. I'm okay with the universe, even if it gives me a bad hand, okay? That's happiness. Happiness is <laughs> we do it differently because again remember you lose the brain when you're winning and conquering it gives you high serotonin oxytocin and dopamine this is a way it's a coping mechanism literally he's coping right now by telling you instead of trying to win accept your lot in life it can if you are absolutely able to self-hypnotize into accepting servitude and that slave morality it can work but we do not recommend it because you'll be forgotten you will not impact the world instead we are defiant we say no because no is a high high primal status word and that's why you know that we always have this on our tongue no because we only say yes to what we are all about what we work with calm and peaceful contentment when you're okay with life as it is an economic crisis is about to hit us, okay? 
unhappy people will sit and complain and talk about the government and talk about, you know, all of the money that's been printed and talk about this and that and blame the whole world. And then their, their life becomes even worse because they're wasting their cycles blaming the world, right? Happy people, in my definition, will be calm and say, not the first cycle. There has been economic cycles before. Economic cycles come with benefits as much as they come with challenges. Okay, I'm okay with the fact that life is going to be a little harder and I'm going to put the best effort I can to make sure that while I'm calm and peaceful and contented, I'm fully engaged to make the best out of it. That's my definition of happiness. A calm and peaceful state that tells me no lies, no stories about life, that recognizes life with all of its harshness, including losing my son and saying, okay, yeah, I lost my son. At least he didn't suffer, you know, dying. I lost my son, but I didn't lose my lovely daughter. I lost my son, but I loved my son. And he loved me. And we had beautiful 21 years together, right? And those 21 years, I would take the pain of losing him for the rest of my life, for the gift of having him come at the first place. By the way, Ali wasn't planned. The biggest gift on my, of my life, completely unplanned. And he leaves. So I could tell myself, oh, fuck life, you know, why did life do that to me? Or I could say, oh my God, he came for 21 years. Hmm? What a gift. Can I be appreciative of that gift? What's happening there? Remember that when you are wounded, you are seen as a weak, weak, <laughs> non-king. You lose your kingdom if you're seen as a wounded king. Instead, it has to be scars. This is a reframe that turns it into a scar. For the same reason, you've seen Owen Cook when he was showing how he had a broken leg and he was hiding it. He only shown it after it began healing properly and they took out a lot of the... <laughs> A lot of those uh, like band-aids band and bandages that were surrounding his leg. So only now he revealed, oh, actually, for the last uh, three months or two months, I have been having my leg broken. Why did he hide it? Because he understood that a wounded king loses primal status. But now he's speaking about it as a past scar. It works in the same way by reframing the pain of loss of his son into the best thing the most positive thing he's turning it into a scar that healed rather than a wound that keeps putting him down turning him into a victim this is the opposite of victimhood it's important enough to recognize that nothing ever lasts hmm? and contented enough to look at life and say all right now that he's gone and i cannot reverse that what can i do to make my life and the lives of others better that's happiness so i've wanted to have a a long and deep discussion on happiness for such a long time. So I'm very grateful to be here with... I'm happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, maybe grateful is the right word. Mm. Yeah. Um, so normally I like to ask short questions and let you roll. I need to give this one a bit of context. So if you could bear with me for about a minute. So a mentor of mine believes that everything in the... Again, a mentor of mine, don't use that language instead of saying <laughs> a mentor of mine who also happens to be my number one fan who believed for me from day one and saw that I am someone who's going to be exceptional and believed in my message and mission that will change the world. <laughs> and then you go from there. Well, upside and downside. I've tried to disprove that forever and I can't. So I believe that is the way the universe is. And if I try and fight it, which is, I have a fantasy desire for things to all be good. Anyway, he's speaking about something else. I'm not going to speak about it in ter terms of yin and yang, because that's not useful. The way to think about it usefully is in terms of how things return to the mean. What does it mean? <laughs> there is an average way that your life is. And if you go down and lose something after it, you'll get some good news that will take you a bit higher than the average in order for you to always be returning to your average way of being. But if you do not break that cycle, you are literally making yourself perpetually a pop sock peasant who will never exceed your average past life. Your average day will always be your future average day. You might have a few peaks, but they will be <laughs> either uh, before them or after them. They will be surrounded by valleys that will make you be shitty. 
Instead, what do we do? We break that cycle. You take yourself through the delusional confidence that will absolutely break that barometer and stop that uh, governor that was keeping you down into Putin. Like you take your average because it's an illusion and you create an illusion where your average is godly and your dream life. And then the, uh, the ups and downs become at the top of the pyramid, ups and downs that keep your Odyssey story spicy. And that's the only way to win. Again, to repeat it, you have... A, a sticking point <laughs> you are for whatever every human being is stuck in the average of their past life and unless you brainwash yourself using the the brainwashing tools at the fifth training of the brainwashing bible in order to take that average and take it up here because it's only illusion then you will be operating where you are at the top of the pyramid never going down and your uh, your uh, worst day will still be higher than uh, a thousand times higher than your best day from before. So that's what he's speaking about. He's saying that, oh, uh, life is made of uh, ups and downs or uh, of negatives and positives. Again, if you think about it this way, you give up because you think, oh, that means I should just surrender to the flow of the universe. No, you don't surrender. You <laughs> bend life and reality to your will and you use variance to your advantage. And um, I end up being unhappy. And he said to me, we were sat in the back of a car when I was picking him up to go to an event and he just was meditating. I'm not very good at meditation. <laughs> obviously. You, you, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Thanks this for brain, that. This brain doesn't stop, no. does it? <laughs> no, and he was meditating and he turned around to me and he went, Rob, I gave up happiness years ago because it made me so damn depressed. <laughs> and then he went back into his meditation. And I've pondered that for years. No, it doesn't mean anything. What he means is the illusion, the baby illusion that the world is your <laughs> MILF mommy. Uh, check out, there is a podcast episode I have about this that explains to you the difference between being a winner, between being someone, I'm searching for the name of it. Yes, there is a podcast in the podcast playlist called Is Life Your Busty MILF Mommy? That is something that you you need to give up on and see when people do not define the words that they're using, when they do not define what they mean with happiness, you will be lost because he means what I'm speaking about in his life, your uh, busty milf mommy podcast episode. But again, when you are filling yourself with that winner energy of having high serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine, it never goes away because your lizard brain is literally made for it in order to keep you motivated only when you are going to the direction of your life purpose, which is something we define there is even the nine core life purposes as one of the 11 trainings in volume four we are all ahead of the curve when it relates to this society t tell me what you think about this, this is my theory and i practice it on myself all the time society creates an ideology or a delusion or a fantasy that we can have it all and happiness is good and all the good he doesn't define it. We can have it all because we're gods and we use what matters. Yes, if you're following the poop sock way of trying to build real value, you will never make it nowhere and you'll never be happy. You think that life is good or you chase just the good or life is about the good, the happy. Life is about the good and the happy and fuck it. It's all delusion. Notice he's saying it's all, it's, a delu it's all delusion. Like, tell me one thing about life that is not a delusion. Doesn't it look like to you, for example, for the people who go to church, that's literally <laughs> blood magic <laughs> and it's all delusion. The sense that people feel like at all and the sense of uh, religious peace, it's self-hypnosis, uh, <laughs> all of it, all of it. The army, when they make people, they break the soldiers down in order to turn them into killing machines. That's a delusion. All of it is a delusion. Use the right delusion, the self-brainwashing that makes you delusionally confident rather than delusionally subservient. So again, he's going to attack something by saying it's a delusion. What is not a delusion? <laughs> it's all delusion. So we use the delusions that give you real, practical money, cash, dream life. And that's what we operate with it. We can have it all and we can good things last for the Invictus King. Happiness is good and happiness is good. Glory is blazing. All the good. We love all the good. And so the problem when you think that life is no pro everything could be seen from a problematic lens, but we <laughs> keep winning is good or you chase just the good or 
We love the good. We don't chase it, we live it. Life is about the good that... Yes, life is about being a king and living that best life. Happy? That's a delusion because it's impossible. It's all delusion. Because people... It's not impossible. Again, <laughs> the only way for you to be the exception is to believe that you're exceptional. Let's say it's 0.1% possible. Well, if you make it because you're using primal cess elevation, it's 100% possible for you. It's, uh, it's uh, only 99.9% .9 impossible for the poop sock peasants. But for the Invictus Kings, that 0.1%, which is a lucky Bergy percentage to, the, to that someone... Maybe, maybe one poop sock will be lucky. <laughs> we don't. We operate pragmatically with a planned methodology of the 33 steps. All of this is saying, oh, happiness and being a king. And No, it's not because it's not real. What do I mean it's not real? It's not dependent on the circumstances. It depends on you summoning the cheerleading power of your lizard brain. That lizard brain fills you with uh, serotonin, oxytocin, dopamine when it sees you increasing your primal status. And then, have you ever been in such a good mood that no bad news could mess with you? You're just like, ah, I'm not here to hear it right now. I'm in too good mood to do it. So anyway, he's speaking. And often, the people who speak this way are depressed as fuck. They ha <laughs> you can feel their energy. They're not uh, they're going to give you a damn thing. That's a delusion because it's impossible because people... Fuck you. There's, we say <laughs> to the impossible, we turn the impossible into easy and possible. Businesses we sp spent 20 years to build, would they go bust? We are the exception. The, uh, things, good things go up, 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 never down. <laughs> they last for the Invictus Kings. What the fuck is this? Again, this is slave morality that will deflate your motivation before you start, which is what the masters want for real, for real. He doesn't even know that he's contributing to the mass enslavement of humanity by saying, you know, happiness is impossible. So accept your lot as an unhappy poop sock peasant. Fuck all of that. And you know, an animal knows it's going to have to fight for its life. It doesn't know. Animals are literally working on instinct. They're not planning ahead and they're happy constantly. And then when they die, they die. They're not like an animal knows that at some point they're going to... No, they don't know that they're going to die. They don't know that they're going to fight for their life. They are just taking it moment to moment. Literally, he, this uh, example is shitty and it doesn't work within his paradigm. And so I think society is deluded is creating its own unhappiness and depression. Fuck society. Again, saying society means the average person, the average way of the average people. We are beyond that. We don't operate within the rules of society because we are demiurges. We build brand new universes that you design in your favor. Fuck society. It's not something that we operate within. Creating a one-sided fantasy that happiness is a thing, like the perfect partner is not is a thing. And then... And then Robert Greene was talking about amor fati, which is love everything. And, and I just thought, that's it. Like, happiness isn't, I want Mo to be how I want Mo to be, so I'm happy because I can control how he is. Happiness is loving Mo for who love is, yeah. who Mo is. <laughs> and everything that happens, I love it, even though it wasn't what I wanted and, and what I planned. This is submission, fuck that. Defiant to the last breath. We don't love a damn thing unless it's our dream lives. I've ever asked, so we've broken a record. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and that is people, I believe people think the purpose of life is happiness. I also believe that's a fantasy delusion on one side. I don't, the purpose of life isn't happiness. The purpose of life is life. And, and what is life? Life is evolution, survival, me. This is his be merry right now. Is this a good be merry? It's shitty. The purpose of life is survival. Who says that? Who's surviving? The, <laughs> it's poop sock peasants. Poop sock peasants are surviving. The primal set superiors are thriving. We don't associate with these people. We don't think in this way. Yes, when you're a slave and you are constantly whipped in order to pick cotton in the plantation, your purpose of life is to survive. We're not. We create universes. We have infinite power. We summon the primal sets elevation, <laughs> masteries, tools, and absolute hijacking <laughs> techniques. We don't need to. We worked so hard. We went through so much and we have too much powerful knowledge for us to be content with the slavery of poop sock peasants. Is, and technology, like with AI, we, we assume becomes better. So. Therefore, if we try to self-actualize, what that is is growth.
and growth is hard. Growth is, you know, a, a plant struggles to, to grow through. So what? He's saying, oh, that is growth and growth is hard. So you stop growing? <laughs> like, what the fuck do you mean? Again, I told you, when you summon the cheerleading ability of your lizard brain because you use the 33 unfair advantages that aligns and makes your lizard brain uh, your best friend instead of your enemy, it gives you a cocaine cocktail of chemicals so that even if objectively things are hard, you cannot feel them are hard. Have you ever had the experience of flow where you're doing something that objectively will be hard, but you enjoy it so much that time passes and you're like, I love this so much, I could do it all day. What's happening there? That's what we summon. And therefore, the hard things to the slaves are easy to us as masters who are building religions. Struggles to shed its skin. If you watch a crab get rid of its shell, it's an amazing thing. And I believe all happy. That is a Freudian slip. He's speaking about crabs, crabs in the bucket that keep putting each other back so that they get slaughtered and they keep just pulling each other down. And he's like, look at the crab shedding script. We don't associate with crabs. Fuck that. We're gods. It's different. It's immediately after you've transcended the struggle because that's the reward. Again, more pop soccery. Our happiness is consistent. It's with the daily W's. Each time that you increase your primal stats a little bit towards your life purpose, as you found in volume two and volume four, your lizard brain immediately rewards you with high serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine. But the slaves, they have a different definition of, I struggle so much, pain. Pain gives me endorphins. Notice the difference. Endorphins come after pain. We want serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine because they're empowering. Endorphin is the same thing that is released when you are a prey that that is dying when a lion is just the bite in the neck off of a gazelle it feels the high from endorphins so that it doesn't die in agony but actually dies in a highness and that's why he's saying he's using the same structure of reality that makes you a little prey to say be a pop sock peasant do not be ambitious and it's funny, it's said by people who are, <laughs> you know, multi deca millionaires, and they're speaking about, no, for life, just be a poop sock peasant. Again, it's to their best interest to keep you small. That creates growth, because happiness is, doesn't create growth. Happiness is a, a sense of satisfaction of being in the moment. If we're all just in the moment, nothing would grow and nothing would. Flow is the opposite of, <laughs> like, he's wrong. A flow only happens when there is a level of challenge and a level of skill that is superior to that challenge. Nobody said, just stay uh, on a beach and you will be feeling happy. We spoke about it, that the daily W's and the daily conquests create happiness, but nobody will ever believe it's hard when you summon the cheerleading ability of your lizard brain that fills you with uh, serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine, rather than, than this endorphin given up be merry. Do not believe this. Be merry. Yes, he's convincing people of his uh, school of thought. It's shitty, but still, at least he has one. So the purpose is growth and struggle and challenge to make us stronger, because that's the only way we get stronger. But we need a reward for that. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. And the reward is happiness. And society is taught. We're different. Uh, we grow our kingdom. He's speaking about becoming stronger as a slave, where you say, I'm picking cotton, but every day, look at me, my body is getting more muscular so that I can handle picking up more cotton. That's what he's saying. And then at the end of the day, when you're tired from picking cotton for your masters, you feel content and happy because you grew. No, there are different levels of growth. We want to grow our kingdom, our dream life, our impact, our cash, <laughs> our concubine numbers, not growing for the sake of growing because slaves can grow and yet be even more mules for their masters. Without the struggle. So that's the longest question ever. I, what I, do you think? I can't tell you how many layers uh, <laughs> I disagree with you on. <laughs> <laughs> please, please disagree with me on it all. It's fine. Can, can I go backwards from the I, end? I will love you just as much if you disagree with everything. So, so. so I, I love the bit where you said, I love more exactly as... Yeah. <laughs> That's reassuring. Uh, uh, let's start from the end. That's weakness. He needs validation. Oh, I said I love Mo as Mo is. That is reassuring. We don't need reassurance. We're too busy winning. People need you for reassurance. That is you being the source of their uh, validation. But do not be the one who needs gold stars and validation. Fuck all of that. We're kings. We move different. Your king moves of his own accord. We move different. Different things. Okay. Okay. Biologically, in our bodies, they're very different things, right? Ooh. So. Uh, 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 both are survival mechanisms. You have to understand that. Hmm? Mm -hmm. the, the reality is that 
reward is associated with a hormone called dopamine. And dopamine is a... Not only that, dopamine is the expectation of reward, the whole thing. <laughs> Oxytocin is a reward, serotonin is a reward, even endorphins are rewards for poop socks as they die, so that they die <laughs> in a way that is not too agonizing. Hormone in your body that says, oh my God, that feels so good, do more of this, right? That feels so good, do more of this. Yes, that's what I said. Part of the motivation is dopamine, which is part of what we master and dominate. Deal, uh, you know, I, uh, I found, uh, you know, I had sex with someone, I had this, I had that, whatever, right? Business deal is serotonin. And again, dopamine is always in the background. I had sex with someone is oxytocin. Dopamine is in the background. We already mastered those. Um, you know, a, a coin on the floor, whatever that is, right? Do dopamine in its nature is an excitatory. It's basically something that makes you uh, excited. Exactly. And that is the passionate instinct you will feel every day because you see yourself increasing your rank every minute. Um, happiness, as I describe it, calm and peaceful contentment is serotonin. Serotonin is a very different hormone. Serotonin is a calmer. Do you see that calmer because the people at the top, and that's one of the things that I spoke about in the forbidden live streams and the weekly live streams, that poop sock peasants have this idea that bosses are angry all the time, but actually the big bosses are calm all the time. And we explain the difference between the Harkonnens and the emperor in doing part two related to this. One job and one job only, which is to tell you, I've scanned the world around me. Okay, and it seems safe enough for you to rest and digest. Seems, it seems safe enough for you to sit back. It's different. He's not saying it exactly how it is, but when you feel so dominant that you're in control of your kingdom and therefore safe in the middle of your kingdom, that is what he's speaking about. Not uh, that, oh, temporarily I am safe enough because it's a, no, it's a dangerous. Oh, there are no predators. I can feel serotonin. No, there are a lot of safe, depressed people. It doesn't work only that way. We know how to use it to be conquerors. He's speaking about it. Still from the mindset of a poop sock peasant who's looking for safety, we are looking for opportunities, excitements, and dominance. Accept life as it is, hmm? imperfect as it may be, uh, but then close your eyes and reflect, sleep, uh, digest your... Never. Your lizard brain will never let you do that. He's saying, accept life as it is, uh, no matter how imperfect it may be. No, the cortisol will pump through your veins. Your lizard brain will not allow that. This is him. Remember. He's speaking as a higher level peacemaker king, which is basically a poop sock peasant who happened to have a kingdom. We call this a lucky burgi. And therefore, he doesn't understand that fire of conquest and that W's, those W's of dominance, those uh, he uh, used to taste before he got humbled and let himself be humbled. We are never humbled. So on and so forth. The problem with dopamine and serotonin is they cannot coexist in your body. Right, so an excitatory will kick your your calmer out hmm? by definition, and uh, there is only one for one state. Not correct. Not correct. It's cortisol that doesn't coexist with those love. Love is a hyper mix of uh, serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine. It's a, co uh, a cocktail of chemicals that uh, make you literally crazy. And in there, there is dopamine, which is you're excited about your lover. You are dominant because you feel you found something special, real love, at least those pop socks who believe in that, and oxytocin of desire and <laughs> lust. It's all happening at the same time. So again, he's speaking in a way that is not at all um, realistic. He is using just some simplified forms or some simplified understandings of these things that we build the foundation of... Uh, our uh, a passion on and therefore we need to understand them much deeper and understand that he's hyper simplifying the world but we take that complexity because we are big boys enough to handle complex things which is known to have both dopamine and serotonin but we can talk about that later hmm? in general if i get a so do you see he said oh you cannot have dopamine and serotonin but when you're in flow you have dopamine and serotonin well <laughs> we live in flow all the time although we take it beyond we live in that winner reward when you are dominating you have Serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine, even he admits it, but he says that's an exception. We are the exception either way. No matter what he says, even if his poop sock ideas are correct, we are the exception and therefore we'll have in it all. We're having that 
passion that heals all the depressions and the sadness. I'm no longer calm. I'm chasing more, right? Interestingly, hmm, uh, dopamine is very addictive. It, it, it is literally like heroin. Hmm? Because the more... They're all addictive. And that's why I said that the cocaine cocktail of chemicals, he's calling it heroin, but it's all similar in uh, those ways. Why did they call it heroin? Because when you get that, you feel like a hero, invincible. And when you naturally release that using your daily W's without absolutely fucking up your brain, you are getting the healthy hero feeling. And that's why I say primal set superiors are invincible. Poop sock peasants are invisible. Your brain receptors downregulate. So if I give you 10 units of dopamine to feel, the, to feel rewarded, Okay, the next time I give you 10, 10 units, it doesn't feel rewarding anymore. You need 11. And then yes and no. When you are doing, it seems magical. When you are building your life purpose, and there are nine life purposes that you can find yours in the volume four, it never stops away. It never dissipates because your lizard brain thinks, damn, you are building your life purpose. This is what you're meant to do in this world. And this will allow you to get the highest caliber hotties and maximum money and survival. And therefore, it becomes a survival matter of survival to keep you motivated nonstop. We spoke about rich people who are depressed because they stopped building their life purpose or they never even built it in the first place. They were lucky burgies. He is conflating too many things that are nuanced. An expert understands nuances. If you are someone who built primal stats without your life purpose, yes, you end up totally depressed <laughs> like he's speaking about. If you stop building your life purpose, you go totally depressed, but you never burn out when you are doing something that you love so much that you are in constant flow. And again, he's hyper simplifying something that we know a lot more about it because we need to, since it's part of you being a conqueror. And so accordingly, you know, you, you find people going from a party to a wilder party, going from, you know, running on a treadmill to jumping out of an aeroplane. Hmm? Yes, that is not building your life purpose. That's why they need more intensity. We operate differently. We need to, <laughs> there is, uh, like, you've seen it. Why, uh, for example, um, uh, Tony Robbins, <laughs> he seems to be excited all the time. Why do you see so many athletes refuse to give up even when they hit the wall? It's because they're, <laughs> they are doing something that they were born to do. And therefore, they cannot just stop themselves. They're addicted to the wins. Why? They did not burn out and need more of whatever. They just love to be in that element nonstop. Again, we're speaking about something. Ours is closer to flow and therefore never ending. And he is speaking to Pop Socks, just getting temporary jolts of uh, uh, dopamine or temporary jolts of serotonin. Or dopamine to feel rewarded. And, and it's very short-lived. You get a, a jolt of dopamine. And the idea is I'm not going to make you feel good for long. The idea is that dopamine will be diffused in your body normally within 90 seconds. And now you need another jolt. You need another kick and another kick and another kick. Here's the interesting thing. Hmm? The interesting thing is that uh, because of the way dopamine works, we keep chasing targets hmm? and we achieve them. We keep, we keep chasing pleasures and we achieve them. We keep chasing achievements and ego and we achieve them but it keeps us on that treadmill all the time. Hmm? As we stay on that treadmill all the time. Again, I already debunk this. When you think about it, is there anything wrong with the fact that because I breathed, I will breathe next time. I cannot just say I had one breath. I'm on the treadmill of breathing. Why am I on the treadmill of breathing? Why can't breathing end? Because if breathing ends, you die. It's the same thing. You wake up. Oh, I need to shower today. I showered uh, yesterday and the day before. Am I on the treadmill? No. It's all part of life. If you're alive, you are conquering. And therefore, he's saying, you are on the treadmill of chasing targets. We don't chase targets. We build kingdoms. It's way, way beyond that small poop soccery. And again, there is no such thing as too much winning. Like, what the fuck? Winning is a real fun. And he's saying, you're, on the you're such a winner. Why are you winning so hard and so much? You're on the treadmill of winning. Fuck yeah. <laughs> like, what what's the problem with that if you're summoning? your lizard brain to constantly be rewarding you within his model no you burn out uh, and uh, you don't get any more dopamine from chasing targets or whatever he's saying we're like dude we're building our life purposes it never ends the happiness is glorious forever that is the difference between us we are deities we're gods he's speaking about mere mortals 
the idea of losing the opportunity to slow down because of serotonin hmm, to um to to actually uh, give your liver a chance to take some poisons out of your body to take to give your kidneys a chance to to operate hmm? because when you're in that hyper uh, uh, state you're constantly uh, depriving your um, vital functions your digest digestive system your you know your filters your glands and, and so on from the energy that they need to be able to get anything done right so what's the answer? Hmm? Is the answer to constant... It's incorrect. I spoke about the health benefits of being a winner and how that actually gets you into a much healthier glowing state. And now he said, anyway, fuck all this. He's just speaking about something that understand when you build in the kingdom you're meant to build in this world none of these rules apply to you. You operate at a different level and in a totally different paradigm. To constantly chase serotonin, the answer is to alternate between them. The answer is to, is to, interestingly, like our two podcasts, your podcast is very like, let's achieve, let's learn, let's so on. Mm. My podcast is let's chill and have a slow, a slow hour to talk about <laughs> lovely things, right? And the, the mix of the two mm, mm. creates an environment where you recharge, replenish, and then jump out in the world and then recharge. It. Okay, we agree with that. We spoke about the strategy of pampering yourself as a king and conquering and how every day you do both you don't miss a day you don't sacrifice today is an important day for you to live that luxury life as a king so we are in agreement let's say we are in agreement about this point the core of your question though is uh life is a um a struggle or life is a challenge it's not true at all it's not true at all okay the events of life can stretch you, okay? But as long as you're alive, hmm, the struggle happens inside your head. That this is the biggest difference between happiness practitioners hmm, and those who don't. It's, you know, I, I, because of, you know, I used to be chief business officer of Google X. So in the, in the total fast stream, hmm, like high paced, very challenging, very, very pressuring, and then I became a happiness uh, advocate, if you want. The first time I did that, I went to the World Happiness Summit. I used to go to Davos and, you know, the GSM Congress and everyone is so serious and everyone's done. And then there is a World Happiness Summit and you go there and everyone's hugging everyone. It's, it's a very interesting place. And I was like, man, there is that part of the world. But from then, I started to meet lots of happiness practitioners, including His Holiness the Dalai Lama, you know, some of the, you know, top monks in the world, some of the top neuroscientists and so on. And I used to ask them a very, very simple question. Even in this, do you see how much he dropped names to build his King Arthur? From Davos to the Dalai Lama on <laughs> top uh, neuroscientists, all those are elevated elevations of primal status by association. Happy, okay? And everyone was like, I remember Matthew Ricard I hosted on my podcast. And Matthew is an amazing human being, uh, uh, cell biology PhD, uh, highly intelligent decided to leave life behind and go be, be among 60,000 hours of lifetime meditation, which a lot of people would wonder because 60,000 hours for you, Rob, would be a billion dollars of money, right? Yeah, I couldn't do 60 minutes. <laughs> yeah. but, 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 and, and, and he was actually known to be the world's happiest man in, in headlines, uh, you know, in the newspapers, because his brain was reconfigured as a, mm. as, a, as a result of that. And I asked him, I said, Matthew, so are you happy all the time? And he laughs in his very, very French accent. And he goes like, Mo, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm always pissed off. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, what? And he says, you know, the state of the world, of course, gets to my, to my. We're different. We're happy all the time because we believe in our manifest destiny that we are writing. And why are we happy? Because we understood. The way is to have your uh, lizard brain to summon it as a cheerleader for you. And therefore internally, you're so full that you overflow with happiness because serotonin, oxytocin, dopamine is all part of the illusion of the self brainwashing that we keep working on three minutes every day. You find it in the trainings at primalsess.com and make sure to join us this weekend as we break down the Matrix movie. But I always bounce back to calm and peace. Understand, mm. it's not contradictory. Mm. It's that idea of, yes, life is going to throw shit at me. Hmm? 
I will take it, I will get emotional about it, hmm? but I will always bounce back to calm and peace, collect myself and do the right thing. Hmm? So if you mix them up, if you mix them up, if you believe that, you know, binge watching Netflix or winning a deal or, you know, uh, uh, finding a sexy partner or whatever hmm, is the purpose of life, then you're going to constantly be chasing kicks of dopamine. Okay. If you tell yourself, hold on, I can actually sit back, be very calm, hmm? look at the world. This contradicts it. He said the happiest man in the world is constantly pick, pissed off. That doesn't sound happy to me. He said he's not happy. So the happiest man in the world is not happy. So <laughs> what's the difference between you building goals and dreams and always wanting more and the happiest man in the world that is being unhappy? And notice, he says something and then extracting from it, be calm and peaceful and therefore you will be happy. No, the, literally, the happiest man in the world was saying that he's pissed off. It shows you, if you're not conquering, you cannot trick your way into uh, feeling elated. Understand what I can affect and cannot, then come up with a plan that is the easiest path through the shit, okay? In that case, that serotonin hit, hmm? is actually the most effective thing you can do for your success. It's to be able to deal with life with calm and peace and contentment, to be able to deal with life without anxiety, to be able to deal with life with your full. Again, it contradicts his example of the happiest man in the world that was constantly pissed off. That is anxiety. No, you try, <laughs> like he's saying to try things that actually do not work. The right way is have with you allies and alliance of absolutely strong, powerful people. So you're never alone. And therefore, no matter the challenges you have by your side, people who got your back, like the Invictus Kings right here. And check out the membership to see in the Telegram group, how passionate, how ambitious, how self self-motivating and motivating each other we are we and uh, you will get also access to that forbidden live stream this weekend as we break down the matrix movie both are equally important without the ambition that dopamine gives you hmm, you'll never achieve breakthroughs without the calm that serotonin gives you you'll never ever be your full capacity okay you'll always be distracted you'll always be negative it's the two of them and the balance between them. It's what, it's what Matthew and every other happiness... Literally, we become the source of uh, serotonin, oxytocin, he's forgetting that one, and dopamine of your super fans. When you're the source of that, you become addictive and they stay with you forever and they feel grateful to you. The more you brainwash them, the more they think, say thank you for brainwashing us because you're giving them that ability to um, reward them, you as the god, by speaking to the lizard brain correctly and they cannot do that to themselves. And you can do it to yourself to keep yourself high all the time, high of living the life mm, works on it's life will throw shit at me i will find a way to be the best version of myself and then deal with it wow it's been yeah. a pleasure thank same you same here thank yeah. you very much for having me <laughs> let's move on to the next video in the world today is not safe it's not dangerous yet it's definitely safe what does that mean? It's not dangerous yet, but it's definitely not safe. He needs to find a way to lizard brain squeeze them. Profoundly impacted me and shaped the way I think about AI, fatherhood, and the biggest questions. So the interviewer is someone who was intellectually penetrated and is testifying to it by Mo Gaudat. Mo Gaudat, former... Google X, chief business officer, founder of One Billion Happy, host of the Slow Mo podcast, and best selling author who warned the world about the potential threats of AI years before. <laughs> warned the world. Did you notice earlier? He said, My goal is to make um, a million people per month uh, happier, and now a billion happy. Was that increasing his uh, promised land? He's using that NESB right there to show you that no matter what he says, ignore the content. The structure is uh, deeply immersed into some of the 33 unfair advantages that you find in the link in the description. Started. His expertise ranges from AI to engineering happiness in the video game we call life. One choice is to have lost our loved ones and be miserable. And the other choice is to have lost our loved ones and choose to be happy. 
the only difference between them is a choice. Today, he's here to share some of the expertise with us. So without further ado, let's jump right into the episode with my friend, Mal Gadot. Welcome, everybody, to what uh, will undoubtedly be one of your favorite episodes of all time on the Into the Impossible podcast. A man that needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway. It's Mo Gadot, who's influenced me in many, many ways influence me in more, many many ways do you see that what does it mean he spoke some words those words follow the structure of lizard brain communication that change the wiring of your audience as you find how to do that with the templates and step by step in the training and then people are grateful forever and that's how you begin building those super fan relationships and the first step is a thousand super fans that love you feel grateful to you and feel the need and the itch to uh, pay you at least a hundred bucks per month, a thousand people, that's a good 100 grand. And then you build uh, uh, groupies that become your concubines. It's the best cheat code to your dream life and it works. 33 steps, the real 0.1% of what matters in this world, like the 0.1% of things in the world that matters, 99.9% .9 are a waste of time. AI, artificial intelligence, but more importantly, how I think about fatherhood, happiness and the biggest picture questions in all of the universe. Uh, and so Mo, I want to thank you so much for taking so much of your time late at night over there in uh, in Dubai. Thank you so much for joining us in the Into the Impossible podcast. It's such an honor, uh, Brian. Thank you for having me and thanks for that. Uh... So again, he's been a peacemaker king. Do not be that if you're in the beginning. Only be that if you lose <laughs> your ambition and then we don't associate with you because we're ambitious forever and therefore outlaw kings till the end of time. And then when the time ends, we will restart it and be outlaw kings again because it's a king thing. And that's how we roll. Uh, my travel eased up a little bit. I think a good problem for my undergraduates would be to compute Mo's average velocity because you travel... <laughs> a couple hundred days a year, which is which is wild. Uh, we have many connections. We, are we don't need to now, based on the uh, fact that humanity is living more and more in a, this virtual reality, and this virtual reality impacts the real world more than you trying to do the manual labor in the real world. You can be chilling in the Bahamas, chilling in Dubai, chilling <laughs> in a Tibet monastery, making money hand over fist, living your dream life, using just your phone and your voice, using your mastery of the lizard brain communication, 33 steps, and then you got location independence, money free freedom and total admiration that keeps you filled with uh, uh, serotonin, oxytocin, and dopamine. Through our mutual friend, Peter Diamandas, uh, who is uh, an incredible intellect. And Peter is uh, coming up. Uh, we have him recorded from an interview we did in October. He'll be on again very soon talking about AI risks and threats and education, all sorts of things. But he was kind enough to introduce me to you and, and you accepted, you said yes. So uh, that was uh, a very joyous time for me. And I want to begin today by talking, you've written so many books and done so many things in your time, both at Google, Google X, uh, and also through your writing and your podcast and your uh, many, many different forms of outreach. But today we're going to do what you're never supposed to do, which is to judge a book by its cover. It's forbidden to do that, but we're going to do it anyway, because Mo, what else do you have to go on? If someone, if they're, you know, in Antarctica, where I've been twice, you know, there are people who may not have heard about you. Flexing. Oh, if someone is Anta in Antarctica, where I've been twice, good the author, and you've seen it, maybe that the photos of him with all those different authors, he's using the King Arthur Odyssey story as well, right there. I'm speaking about the podcast host. The cover art and the title of your two wonderful books that we'll talk about today, Solve for Happy and Scary Smart. Let's start with Scary Smart. What made you choose the the cover, which is a, a little intimidating. I, uh, so, so the title was a no brainer for me, honestly. The title uh, was a play on, on the threat of AI, but, uh, you know, they are scary smart in many, many, you know, you, you rarely ever get a, um, a publisher to approve your choice of a title. That's normally not what publishers do. Uh, but I think Scary Smart got notice. But he's the exception. Normally, other people, mere mortals, have obstacles. But to him, it's the easy royal road to <laughs> success. This is a good flex that people do exceptions for him. Uh, in everyone thought, oh, that's a clever uh, description of the future that we're about to embark on. Whether it's you know not as scary, like I'm afraid, kind of uh, 
uh, you know, scary. Hopefully, we would get it right, and AI may not end up. <laughs> not good. Do not lower your lizard brain squeeze if you're going for it. He's like, hopefully it's not. No, it's scary. And I have the solution. And I am here to part the sea to give you the 10 commandments that take you to heaven because hell is so fucking scary. That's the, the, uh, the attitude, not this one. Again, peacemaker. He is a lucky burgie who happened to get status without building all 33 unfair advantages. So this violates both the rules that we speak about. There are two rules in volume four that allow you to evaluate whether you're speaking from a primal stats way or you're speaking as a poop sock peasant. And without those rules, you cannot evaluate your uh, words and your behaviors. And then you cannot check yourself. Right now we're checking him. He is uh, doing some poop sock, sh sh shooting himself in the foot. Uh, but either way, they're, they're, they're very smart. They're scary smart. Uh, the, the cover art, on the other hand, I normally draw my cover arts myself. Uh, so every, uh, you know, every one of my books, but for that one specifically, the publisher came up with a better art, to be honest. So, uh, you know, I, uh, I used a very simplistic, but slightly evil kind of emoji. Simplistic, but evil. Why? He knows Lizard Brain Squeeze is what he was saying about the news. They know how to scare you. And he is scaring people as well. He's doing what works. This is what you speak about. Do not be <laughs> absolutely <laughs> coping by thinking, no, I can do it in a way that is Mr. Nice Guy. Doesn't work. It never worked. Only slaves are programmed to do this way so that they're easy to control by their masters because they bury deep down their outlaw and kill their killer instinct. Sort of mis mischievous you know, a uh, face that is a little bit AI-like. They chose this very playful, uh, almost uh, 50s type of toy that looks like a robot, uh, which, uh, which is so cool. But then the, the thing is, when you look behind that robot, uh, the shadow of the robot is a lot bigger than the, than the, than the robot itself. And I really loved that, uh, that choice, I think. Uh, I think the whole idea of the book was to go into the depths of what is the possible shadow of AI. And I think they did a really good job to capture that. Um, Soul for Happy, my first book, uh, on the other hand, was uh, different. Uh, Soul for Happy, uh, as you can uh, imagine the title, and remember what he said, he used to write books. Now he will begin by creating videos to create conversations. What's that? That is what we do with live streaming. And then later on, he can condense those into books because that's the purpose. The purpose is to be someone that they feel they can come to your church every day in order to hear you preach and to worship you. And the purpose of what we also create is what you find the brainwashing Bible. It can be written, it can be audio, it can be tweets, it can be uh, the video. As long as you follow the 11 steps within there, you are going to be winning nonstop. And that's why we literally have that knowledge that you cannot find anywhere else. It took 20 years. I wish it started earlier. Check out my life story and why I created this and why I started this channel. All of it, click here, you will find the video and text. It explains everything. By every uh, <laughs> publisher, uh, simply because uh, solve for X or solve for Y is what we mathematicians like to say. And to me, it's, it's perfect English. Like it, it really makes a lot of sense when you tell me solve for X. I, I understand, but the publishers said it was wrong English and they didn't like it at all. And we had a very, very big fight, uh, solve for happy. Uh, I have to say they were right. So a lot of the people that actually read the book, we had probably close to 300, three quarters of a million copies sold. Then everyone that read the, the book in English. Uh, would probably always complain and say, I was going to pick it up. I didn't understand the title. When we translated it into other languages everywhere in the world, it was the equation of happiness, uh, which or the algorithm of happiness, which is really the base of the book and the equation that describes when we get happy or unhappy. How to live. That's what every religion delivers. He said the equation of happiness or the algorithm of happiness. What is that? Ten Commandments, building your religion. You find how to do that in the trainings. This is already, you see it everywhere. When you have the checklist of the 33 unfair advantages and you look, this is what people who are getting status and getting attention 
do but poop sock peasants they listen dumbfounded and have no idea the structures that is underneath the success it's predictable and it is there you follow it and you will see as you have seen more than 100 testimonials in the dropbox link in the website that show you people are just uh, opening their eyes in awe at the results of you when you speak lizard brain to lizard brain human beings obey you have struggled in the past because people did not do what you wanted them to do the only way to get that is to present yourself as a mythical creature and speak the language of the lizard brain rather than imagining human beings are rational and need to be convinced and need to be argued with it doesn't work other hand everyone loved uh, so the cover art was a collaboration between myself and my daughter who is very 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 artistic um, and i attempted to to draw quite a few uh, eventually she said well you know, the engineer that you are speaking about happiness, uh, what you want to do is to show that how algorithmic happiness is. So she, she picked a very simple smiley emoji and she added equations to them. And, uh, you know, and, and cleverly, uh, you know, these are actually reasonably ac accurate equations. So the, the equation of the curve of the smile is actually the equation of the curve. Uh, you know. <laughs> Anyway, all of that is Odyssey story elements and Peacemaker King dropping in family. Uh, thank you, everyone. Make sure to click this link to join us this upcoming weekend as you break down the Matrix movie. It's a legendary movie and the elements that made it legendary so that you can use them starting next Monday in order to I am legend. be legendary because you know that every day the W's never end. Behold, my reach extends. And check out the newest volume for the MPI framework the cutting edge pushing the primal status uh, mental model the universal mental model primal status to beyond its previous limits that's how we do we're constantly innovating and that's why we win thank you everyone and see you in victus kings tomorrow as we do privately our breakdown of the matrix poop sock peasants see you when i see you you <laughs> whoever is hesitating about his glory doesn't deserve it and therefore they end up masturbating wishing they could be something that they will never be Mercury rising. Behold your king. Ready for meltdown. Kaboom! My subjects will...